So we are back again. I wanted to talk about something since I've been asked a few times about the ultimate guide. I am not ready to do a full length video on this, but I want to make sure that if chat has any items that they can think of to add it to the list, I'm still working on the official order. I'm going to be pricing out all these things that we see on the screen currently. Uh, but probably the most asked question in general when it comes to PSO is what kind of items should I be getting in preparation for ultimate? So I have split basically the items into the different classes. And from there, there's some suggestions based upon uh, what kind of specific ranger you are, if you're human, cast, male, female. And we'll go over very briefly in light detail here. I do want to save a majority of this for a full length video. But for people looking to get ready for Easter, I will very briefly go over some things to consider. So keep in mind that this is a work in progress. But I think first and foremost, across pretty much all of the classes, if you are melee, I think Heavenly Battle is probably the number one easy pickup to get for your character. Things like Ranger Wall are a very cheap, very low level requirement uh, shield that you will use basically all the way until the end of the game. And that also potentially does not require you to use any PDs in order to pick up. You just have to do some mini games. So that's not too bad. Now, I'm kind of going back and forth on this, but I'm putting, uh, getting your buff techniques earlier before certain weapons, and potentially putting the debuffs later in the list. The reason I say this is because uh, prior to pretty much later portions of Ultimate, you will generally outscale the enemy. So having Shifta and D-Band means that for the most part, you will survive most encounters and it will have more of an impact than something like Jelen's Lore do. But I feel like once you have actual weapons to do massive, massive amounts of damage, instead of optimizing the weapons necessarily, making sure that you have Jelen and Zalore maxed means that for the most part, things that might give you trouble, like Dark Falls or some of the other bosses with high defense, uh, suddenly become a lot more within range. But generally speaking, uh, PSO is a multiplayer game, so unless you are really single player only for the most part, if you have the option to gel in Zalore, it's generally not as high priority as actually having the core weapons to do those kinds of runs. So basically from there, uh, Rangers just have like a couple of core weapons that I think once you get them, you can do basically every challenge in the game. And it's a combination of the charge special weapons, like the shotgun, the charge arms, which you should only get for 50 hit because it's pretty easy to get if you're willing to reset shop a lot uh, at high levels, or it's usually only about a PD within the price guide kinds of things. Vulcan very similarly helps with uh, dealing with bosses. Welcome back, Raw. And I think from that standpoint, those will basically carry you through like 50 to 60% of the game. So from there, you basically just want to bulk up so that you have the raw stats needed uh, in terms of minimum ATA, in terms of raw ATP, in order to... Let me do basic ATP mag just for that. In order to basically carry your way through the rest of the game. And I feel like from a utility standpoint, getting a frozen shooter, both from the standpoint of how easy it is to get an early ultimate, and also the ability to basically help you solo carry everything through there means that it's going to be more impactful to you even if you end up in an area you're not able to clear solo just from the sheer power of something like a frozen shooter shutting down all the problem encounters in the game kind of similarly spread needles is kind of like the poor man's weapon uh versus some bosses for example like bolt op so it being able to rapid fire with normal attacks is going to end up stun locking enemies or it's going to basically destroy bosses like Bolt Up in place of needing a super percentage max hit, etc. kind of weapon in order to clear your way through the bosses. Uh, I also similarly put Cannon Rouge a little bit before some of the accuracy units, but as I said before, I'm kind of going back and forth on the order still mentally. But the idea behind it is that these three weapons in particular, Frozen Shooter, Spread Needle, Cannon Rouge, 
will basically carry you through the rest of the game. You could literally just win with those five weapons I've listed there. And there's really not much reason to do other things in early ultimate. So from there, I usually prefer to lean towards just maxing out ATA, which helps with weapons that rely more on hitting with the special attack. So in this primary case for the Ranger, it's the gun known as the Heaven Striker, since it benefits very heavily from uh, accuracy. And unlike something like the Charge Arm or the Vulcan, where you can pick them up cheap with, cheap with 50 hit, it's a lot harder to get a really good Heaven Striker. So even one that's all zeroed potentially has a lot of use to carry your way through bosses and such like that. And eventually that'll be the item that you end up hard farming so I would recommend ultimately when you go through and pick a ranger that you should be the the player that is probably in a comfortable ID to get multiples of those. So for example, I know in the current meta that involves being in the green ID for the most part. So definitely take a look in terms of section IDs, which ones will end up being more grindable. And I think that's another thing that I'm kind of back and forth on when we go into like the official guide territory. I feel like people that want to do like a, you know, so solo found only kind of style, they're going to struggle a lot in this game because there are so many items that are only in certain IDs and they require potentially literally like three to four IDs in order to acquire. And it is very hard, potentially, for example, to get very far as a hunter without having easy ability to farm for certain items that they require. And Ranger could be like that too. So for example, uh, before you get something like a Cannon Rouge on your own, it's kind of difficult to clear certain bosses. Like, yes, Charge Arm helps to some extent, but you will often not be able to stop, for example, the Dragon Boss from taking off into the sky. Uh, you're gonna have some potential trouble dealing with Worm Boss, unless you have like really high ATP, because things like Spread Needle are just kind of mediocre for the most part, and Charge Arm is too slow. So a lot of these things kind of expect that you'll end up using PDs for it. So I think for the most part, when we go into the guide, I want to be very clear. This is more meant for the players that are willing to spend a couple of PDs rather than find it on their own. So for example, finding a Charge Vulcan on your own, even though I think that's probably one of the better choices you could get as a Ranger, is not really realistic but prior to like level 160. I'm not sure of the exact level, I'll double check if anybody has determined the loot table online, since that's a little ambiguous in terms of what's exposed, uh, or excuse me, what's exposed to the end user from the shops. But generally speaking, like, if I were to play a ranger, I will find it much easier to potentially get a heavenly battle. For example, that would be Red ID and Forest and Athenia. But at the same time, the same character that would get that early, easy, heavenly battle from Forest is not able to pick up a Frozen Shooter, which everybody else is more or less able to get in Forest. So it's just kind of one of those things where I'm more listing it in terms of, like, impact on the gameplay and hopefully that will make you either make decisions on whether you want to save up or uh, what potential IDs you need. Since there are so many items across so many IDs, I can't just say this is the perfect ID because honestly it doesn't really exist across the different characters. So just want to put a little, little cliff note there. So I'll go back and forth on this main list. And we'll talk about pricing and why we might use some of these weapons in particular. Um, and you could even see in the notes I've already put in parentheses some of the situations they're used in. So I think one of the big differences is that once you have your core set of weapons, even if they have basically zero hit across the board, they are so powerful that they are run defining for you and you're now able to basically clear a lot of TTF or even some casual play in something like Terrell's Ego and some of the Easter event kind of style things that revolve around killing massive amounts of enemies. Um, once you have those basics out of the way, I think I'm leaning towards maxing luck and power material before touching upon any of these other things. The reason I say this is because everything here scales really, 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 really hard off of crits and power, in particular anything involving the word charge, berserk, or spirit. So if you manage to cap that and you already have your basic leveling ATP mag, which instead of, for example, having like a 32 accuracy uh, 
mag for your Ramar because he only needs that much to cap. It's probably better just to go for a simple 5 defense, 150 power, 45 dex mag setup. Because that way it's more universal across your characters and you're getting more bang for your buck. And for the most part, if you're able to purchase those accuracy units, Heavenly Arms being 25 accuracy, um, and, and Adept is kind of the rich man's version of it, I generally don't recommend it. I was going to put this in more of like the minor optimizations category, but there are scenarios where I do value Adept over Heavenly Arms. A lot of that has to do with the fact that if I only need 20 accuracy, Adept is just strictly better because it gives bonuses to resistances. But it also cheapens things like Spirit because it'll reduce the TP cost of using it. So sometimes it has a meta use, and that's why I wanted to put it there. But I also wanted to be clear in the final guide that I don't recommend getting an Adept before the rest of these. So it'll be more like... Probably do something like this in the final guide itself. And from there, there are certain items that have such heavy requirements that it is just not even possible to recommend before you have all your materials capped out. And one of those being the Excalibur. The Excalibur is a really great weapon. It is a kind of run-defining saber for PSO. So in that case, if I have at least 800 minimum ATP, which is a lot, especially if you don't have materials, uh, you basically have a weapon that solos uh, Volt Op if you have uh, V801. It destroys Worm Boss for you. It it has certain benefits on very common enemies, like the lizards that are immune to projectiles in Episode 4. So it's just a very solid kind of final item that I would recommend before you start going into the more niche things down below. So whether or not that involves uh, opting out for Galatine, which is the spirit equivalent of Excalibur, it gives up a triple hit, or just having raw ATP, therefore faster ball up kill. Um, these are the kinds of things I want to consider when we're talking about the guide, where people can make their own decisions, what makes sense for them. So for the Ranger in particular, um, I'm on the fence whether I would recommend things like V501 before the armor unit, I'm of the opinion that if all you're looking to do is TTF, which is a common boss rush thing, I don't recommend basically ever picking up V501. And that's kind of the thing where it becomes increasingly subjective as we go down the list. So if you're more of a casual clear kind of player, or you're doing a lot of episode 4, I would very much rather have V501 than a lot of these other options potentially, uh, since it opens up the door for absolutely ridiculous clears so for example v501 with a combination of spread needle means it's basically over you now have the ability to shut down a lot of annoying problems across different episodes and similarly if you want to start using hell guns to clear episode two this is kind of the gateway like i don't really i don't really enjoy playing with hell especially that in multiplayer prior to getting at least a v501 so in solo play, I feel like once you get V501, it makes those guns kind of worth picking up. But I think from the standpoint of my personal preference, before I even touch V501, because that involves potentially using another unit slot, I actually really like the ability to have demons across different characters. Actually, I'm looking at this, I'm missing something. I'll put Slicer Fanatic here. Honestly, I, I think I'm going to push Slicer and Fanatic. <laughs> I think I put it in um, additional for a while. But the intent for Slicer and Fanatic is I think this is one of the best slept on items of the game. I don't see this in a lot of lists that talk about guides for recommended gear for Rangers. I think it is one of the cheapest pickups. You could get it for basically one PD and it can have zero hit for a Ranger. And if you're a human ranger, this thing is literally going to be the problem solver. Like, are you dealing with like an 8,000 health Gurdabulu and your character doesn't have like really great stats? Who cares? Throw out Slicer Fanatic, you just did like 6,000 damage. And you save yourself like literally solid minutes of gameplay fighting those things. Like, are you are you playing episode 2 and you're not able to consistently land hell? No problem, just Slicer, slicer Fanatic everything in the game and it destroys them, so you could combo kill most things in the game. 
So I'm definitely a big fan of Slicer Fanatic. Technically, you could get away with the Demon line, whether it's Ray Gun, Laser, or Bringer's Rifle. Bringer's Rifle being a more expensive option, but it's more universal across the characters. So it's one of those few items where I feel like it it is worth its cost if you're planning to also play a Force, since this is their only major option for dealing with uh, long-range demons. And you kind of kind of share that between all of your classes. Uh, similarly, there are some conditional items here. Actually, I don't like this here. I'm going to move Twin Blaze out of here to down here. I think that makes more sense. So from the standpoint of female clear, they have an additional two weapons that I feel are kind of run defining, especially if you're going through things like episode four. Vivian, I just feel like allows you to hit so many combo kills. You're not able to hit normally, which is kind of huge for them. And in addition, I think Last Swan is my favorite gun of all time, so I have a big bias towards it. But obviously there are weapons that are slightly stronger. So I would recommend overall that you pick some of the more meta choices before you potentially go into those. Give me one second, John. We have run out of Sonic music. So I think from that standpoint, those are ones that I, I think are kind of like the guilty pleasure in terms of PSO upgrades. I do feel like Last One will end up being a pretty nice alternative to Heaven Striker, but at the same time, like an even slightly optimized Heaven Striker will be better than Last One. But it's kind of that weird portion where if you don't have max ATA and you're not able to hit Sacrifice con consistently, I actually like Last Swan a lot more in most scenarios. But anyway. Um, then I think probably the least important option for the most part for your character are probably the armor options. Like, in order to be very solid in the game, if you just want to get rid of a, an annoying thing with the weapon slingshot effect, I do think that Stealth Suit is probably one of your better choices, since it's going to allow you to technically go through warps quicker. Um, it will stop your bullets from potentially spawning from, like, millions of rooms away if you fire and then swap in between weapons. So from a convenience standpoint, stats on armor don't really matter. For the most part, if you're playing a ranger well, you shouldn't be getting hit. It's generally the rule of thumb. But there are some potentially utility armors that I think are worth mentioning that save you some slots. Like, for example, Sacred Cloth gives you paralysis immunity, so it could be useful when you're dealing with a lot of annoying lilies, for example. Um, or alternatively, you could use Dressplate in the same scenario. Uh, females, unfortunately, only a Brightness Circle for uh, Dark Resistance, so males get the very easy low defense, complete immunity armor, and Brightness Circle is kind of a high defense, semi-low EDK for females. Sadly, females don't have a lot of good options versus lilies, so I don't recommend doing a lot of lily hunts with them. In particular, I usually just prefer to be a force in single player in some of those scenarios, or playing multiplayer, I'd rather be a cast. Uh, but be aware that those are your options if you want to go through with that. I would say probably the more impactful of the armors that I would maybe consider moving in terms of the tiers would be this Deep Hearts version 101. So casts are able to get armor that specifically boosts their attack power. And I do think that actually matters as you get more and more optimized. But until you get to the point where you have like potentially uh, like 50% dark or 50% native, uh, this bonus won't be as impressive. Like, again, getting 35 ATP is not bad, but that weapon percentage on a weapon that you're holding does apply to the armor as well. So that 35 can very easily turn into a 50 or a 55 extra ATP. And that is quite a lot of level ups to basically store on an armor. But if you're just looking for like just an overall easy clear and you're still getting used to the game, I actually do like the Blacktown Carace a lot. It gets rid of evasion, which is kind of a problem if you're looking to do certain clears in Episode 4. Uh, but from the standpoint of... Can I make mistakes and live? This is probably one of the better armors in the game. Then towards the end, I have like a little mini section, like... How do I optimize my bosses? Honestly... I'll kind of list some of these out here again, so I'm probably going to clean this up in 
it will seem like I'm repeating items because honestly, rangers are just about improving what you already have. But honestly, the only thing really new in terms of boss optimization, aside from Cannon Rouge and Heaven Striker being basically as high hit as possible, uh, would probably be an M and A sixty Vice, which replaces uh, a put a places charge Vulcans for like slightly more damage. Uh, I'm gonna say option versus full screen balls for Yashminikov 9000M. 9000M is kind of like a mech gun that is, it doesn't have any useful specials, so the accuracy requirement is not as high, but the ability to use it at like a sniper distance is actually really useful in certain runs, but I probably use it the most versus falls. If falls goes on the opposite side of me, when it decides to do like little zigzags on its final form in the innermost arena, uh, this is the go-to weapon that I use over basically everything. Like, yes, technically, if Heaven Striker is able to reach with Sacrifice Special, it will be a lot better than Yashminikov, but that's not 100% of the boss time, so I kind of hover between having a Yashminikov out and the Heaven Striker uh, in order to basically burst the boss. Then I put in kind of a category beyond this, where they are technically good options for you, but these are kind of things that you should only focus on when you have nothing else to really level. Oh, maybe that's why I moved Twin Blaze out of here. Hmm. I think I see why I did that originally. I'm gonna put an asterisk here. <laughs> I'm gonna go back and forth where Twin Blaze should be on that list. For clarity, Twin Blaze isn't used for its ATP. It's used for its special, but it is used in several runs, so that way, for example, in Episode 4, if there's Dwarfons charging you, you could stop them. If there's Zeus dive bombing, you can stop them. If you're dealing with uh, Del Beaters in Episode 2, they stop them. So having those is basically mandatory as a cast in single player, so that way you don't get deleted. Um, but you don't actually use it for its main weapon portion. So I would argue, almost argue that it's almost a core item, I guess, over situational. Since there's, I think there's enough runs where it would be useful that I, I don't know if I could put it under situational. But anyway, back to minor optimization. These are things you do when you have nothing else to do. Like, that would be worrying about your max stat, stat mag. Um, I guess I could also put here, there's... Uh, I am blanking on the name of it, but there's the dragon scale mag that you could create. Uh, I think it's to Lucius or something. I'm terrible. I'll, I'll look it up later. <laughs> it's it's in my other mag guides, but anyway. Um, the Dragon Scale mag is pretty useful once you have Heaven Striker to allow you to play Episode 4 on your own. So it turns like an episode that is normally kind of awful for Ranger to like a complete joke, because now you have literally all the tools you need once you have a Dragon Scale mag um, to get to Lysias or how, however it's spelled uh, in as a rotation. So that way you can have really quick uh, boss runs start to finish. When you're in like a purely optimal group, it is not mandatory, but when you're playing single player, it opens up a big, big, big amount of quests by having this. But it's one of those things where unless you have everything else in play, including really high MST, it's not usually worth using. So I, I like Talesius, but unless I have like a mind version of Talesius, I'm not going to be doing crazy, crazy damage with it. And again, I, I've done that before. It is nice to have, but it's not as important as some of these other upgrades. I think V101 is, I'm going to call it overrated. It is like one of the better units of the game, but when people are charging like 8, 15 PDs for it, like, do I think V101 is better than having a Heaven Striker if you don't have a Heaven Striker yet or a Frozen Shooter or like three Heavenly Arms? Absolutely not. So while it is a very good unit and it will potentially get you the rest of the way for your stats, I don't view this as kind of like a mandatory pickup until you start getting closer to like 180, 190. So you have a very long time before this becomes extremely relevant. And that's mostly around the time that you end up with the uh, red ring shield itself. Now, there are some kind of like minor optimizations you could do if you happen to be playing episode four and you happen to be picking up Shinshurian abilities, or maybe you're doing uh, Purple ID Episode 2 and you happen to pick up Heavenly ID or Heavenly abilities from Gibbles, for example. Those things are technically better if you're already overcapped in ATA, 
to use in order to just do more damage. It helps you basically get to your max damage potential of max ATA, max luck, max ATP. So there are times you'll swap them out, and generally as you get closer to 180, 190, you're going to be down to at most a Heavenly Arms, if not weaker. So you'll be substituting out the Heavenly Arms potentially for an Adept because you are within like 10 ATA of capping. And then on top of that, having those ability units also give a little bit of ATA themselves. So there are little cutoffs where it is more optimal to do. But it's not, it's not a must-have. It's good. It gives you extra defense. It gives you extra MST. If you haven't capped luck, this is pretty huge before Red Ring. But other than that, it, it's a nice to have. It's not something I'm going to be scrambling to burn my uh, PDs on, or hunt in particular. I have a very small list of situational ranger items. Most of them are the cure units. They're the classics of cure paralysis if you're planning to do a lot of episode one. It is a miser- oh, excuse me. Cure shock, excuse me, if you're looking to do a lot of episode one forest because things like the apes are really awful to deal with, also in episode two. Uh, anything that basically casts on and shocks you is a miserable, miserable, miserable time. And just having this unit alone makes those runs like a complete joke. Um, if you're a human character versus lilies, cure paralysis is really huge, since if you have immunity to their death attacks through things like Dressplate or Brightness Circle plus... Uh, Potentially dark resist units. I guess I could put like dark resist units. Should be resist devil, if I recall up and then from that standpoint, these units can be useful if you're doing a lot of lily hunts. Or honestly, if you have a really coordinated group, these aren't really necessary at all. Lily should never really get a chance to attack you kind of things. Um, there's also Cleo. Cleo is used to increase uh, buff range for certain rangers. It's nice to have, but it's not something I really recommend going out of your way to get. Unless you're basically at the end of the game. It's one of those things where the benefit is rather minor, and it is convenient, but it's not better than anything else that we just talked about up here. So I guess to wrap up rangers specifically, we'll, we'll talk about other classes in the future since I'm still going through these. Ranger is probably the one that's closest to being completed. A lot of this has to do with how fast can you kill a boss or how fast can you clear um, potentially multiple enemies in episode two. So a lot of your endgame things, once you have most of your core from up here, is just making sure you have S-rank weapons. Rangers really benefit possibly the hardest out of all the classes for the S-rank weapons, because they're able to use those specials so consistently, and they have so many options that are useful to them. In particular, having Needle, for example, whether it's Zalor for certain encounters, or whether it's something like uh, Hell Needle, you have a lot of options that potentially clear them pretty quickly. Although I would say there's probably more limited use of Needle. I'll make a little asterisk there for Zalor specifically. But being able to have like a handgun or slicer version of Zalor means that you will have more options for your hunters or potentially your forces. <laughs> oh, it's just literally like a sound effect thing. Are there any other songs here? Oh, there's one more song. I was like random sound effects were starting to distract me. But anyway, from that standpoint, having a handgun or slicer is more universal between the characters. Not that it's specifically better on the ranger, it's just maybe more worthwhile for price reasons. Yeah, let me do something like that. That way I kind of arrange it more according to recommendations. And similar to that, uh, you have to make a decision by the end of the game uh, whether or not you want to use Blue Adoshi Violet Nimadao. Oh wait, no, no, no. I'm sorry, this is a copy in from another character. So you should already have V101. Let me delete this. We're not talking about the Hunter today. So ignore that last comment. From the standpoint of Rangers, you only really have Red Ring. It is the basically penultimate item for Rangers. It's the only thing that is a very easy upgrade over Ranger Wall. I don't think it's worth getting a lot of the other items in its place. It gives you the accuracy bonus of Ranger Wall, but also additional ATP. So all of your weapon percents from really well 
gathered items from before now give even more ATP and allow for potentially big burst damage from you as a character. So the only thing really left to talk about is mostly the impact that your clear speed in episode 2 comes from. So some of your clear speed comes from the Talesius combo with the Dragon Scale Mag. In solo play, uh, I still recommend having things like Heaven Striker by itself for uh, multiplayer play, where potentially you have a lot of casts with you, or potentially you have your Slicer Fanatics to help delete enemies very quickly. Episode 2 is kind of a bit more finicky than that. There's a lot of a, I would say, more difficult requirement in order to do the episodes quickly and to do them well. And some of that has an ability to deal with a unit called V502. So the only benefit it has over the cheaper V501 is that it basically, instead of improving your ability to insta-kill by 50%, it improves it by double. So there are a lot of enemies within episode two in particular that are extremely susceptible to insta-death. So there are entire runs that open up to you once you have that combination of V502 and one of these weapons in order to kill them quickly. So the most common one is probably the S rank Hell Needle, where you could basically rapid fire kill entire rooms and that will end up being one of your primary leveling abilities, especially if you're playing with another new four, no, 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 four sixties me, playing with a new ranger. So I just want to make sure from that standpoint, um, I do emphasize that this is really good. For me personally, I don't play a lot of episode two and I don't enjoy episode two. So I have a pretty strong bias to put this very far down the list, but I will, I will acknowledge it is helpful I like it more in solo play than multiplayer due to the fact that dark resistance from enemies is higher in multiplayer. So for me personally, I never enjoyed the time that I had a Hell Needle it, because I played it almost exclusively in multiplayer. Uh, but it does have its benefits in single player for sure. And kind of the last pickup here to round out your ability to clear things, regardless of episode 2 or not, are S rank Demon Mechs. These things are stupid. They're stupid broken. They will basically make an entire episode a joke. So a lot of late game episode two, uh, things like Gerdabulus potentially are just instantly destroyed. You could do like two specials into normal or a heavy attack and the enemy is dead. It, it does not matter what you're fighting. You will basically combo kill everything as a ranger. It is completely insane. I actually like these a lot more than the Hell Needle, but this doesn't open up runs as much as it opens up the ability to do runs extremely quickly. So that's probably one of my, one of my personal favorite S rank weapons. Technically, you can also do a Slicer as a backup. But again, this is just more going towards whether or not you want to have a character that is specifically really good at their job. Um, and being able to apply demons to multiple enemies, or if you want to be able to just rapid burst with three shots. So, I don't know. I'll go back and forth whether I put that on the final list. And then I would say the final thing that you will ever put PDs into, once you have all of these items to some extent, maybe not completely perfect stats, all your PDs will go towards Sphering of Baran's launcher. That is kind of like the end-all be-all weapon for rangers. So I think we covered at least the Rangers today. So I want people to go and realize like when they're asking me to do like the guides for these kinds of things that there are so many items to consider and so many situations to have to talk about. So even just our little conversation here was uh, quite long comparatively. So we'll see where it goes there. Wait a minute, is it not streaming? <laughs> Wait a minute, did I just do that whole thing? Oh, maybe it's just being weird with me. I was gonna say, OBS please. <laughs> don't don't jump scare me like that. There we go. Oh, that was so scary. It opened up a second copy of OBS that scared me. I was like, that was a long conversation. I'm not redoing that. <laughs> I was like, that, that was a lot of time towards that. Okay, I'm going to close that so no longer jump scares me. No jump scares. 
It told me that it wasn't recording, but yeah, I could see it opened up on the other screen. Big sigh of relief. <laughs> oh, OBS, you're such a troll. But anyway, I will briefly showcase for people that are interested for the other things. I'm still working on what I consider to be like the end-all be-all uh, for hunters. So I, I will leave it on screen. I will not go through this because that was not the question that was asked on uh, YouTube itself. So feel free to go back and pause the video in order to take a look at the work in progress notes. I do not care if you see this because we will be doing a formal video going through. I think the main thing I'm kind of going through and cleaning up for the most part, ironically, is the force. I feel like hunters for me are mostly solved. It's the order of things to get is the force. Because forces are so weird in the sense that, like, there are weapons that are really good with them. But until you hit, like, level 170, the weapons are just useless. Like, I, I think when I played Faux Newman two different times, I basically didn't get any use of Excalibur until 180. So I feel like if you're just looking at, like, the general recommendation of items, it's extremely misleading what items to potentially go for. And that's why I think I want to put extra time on, like, a formal guide going through exactly what we talked about here before, but also breaking down things like where it could be located in Aphidia, what are the PDs, and stuff like that. So if there are any items that chat can think of, I will see if I can add to both of these lists before we go into these. And obviously I have to spell check everything. Like this is basically me going, I need to talk about something today. I will write something during my lunch break. So basically this whole document got updated in the span of 20, 20 to 30 minutes of thinking about it. So a lot of these things I still have to kind of go back and forth and compare on the price guide to determine whether or not I want to bump something up or down. But I think for the most part, it's very interesting where potentially you can end up using your PDs. And I think with forces in particular, with that ability to kind of mess with the merges versus having your like starter kit in order to learn all your techniques is kind of a difficult breakdown to say which one will go first. But I do feel from the standpoint that the moment you're able to at least get a Gafoe or Rafoe, you're basically in business. So I kind of lean more towards us doing a speedrun force strategy kind of thing, rather than something that might be more realistic in finding or doing one of those other things. So yeah, I'm going to go through, I'm going to check some of these things out to see if it makes sense. Or if I need to touch the list up a little bit. But if there's any other S ranks, which probably the things I played the least with overall in PSO, um, I'm definitely interested in hearing the opinions of some of the more veteran players when it comes to those items. Like, I've played the game a lot, and I've made a lot of different characters, but my, for example, my experience with things like Seal J Sword are basically zero. Like, I've played with people that have had it, and I've seen where it's been used, but it's not quite the same thing as having some hands-on experience. So I just want to make sure when we talk about things like Hunters, which I don't play as much, that I'm not forgetting some potentially very useful niche item that we go through and do these things. So at some point, if Hellcleave or Associated Party has any comments on those kinds of things, I'm going to welcome them to take a look through the list again and go, oh, you missed something really easy to talk about in your list. And that way we have whatever we need here. But I do think from the standpoint, there are a lot of trap items in PSO. Like, for example, I really like Magical Peace, but like, is it worth getting it for 50 PDs? before you get all of your techniques or merges? Like, absolutely not. Is it good for, like, being able to do boosted damage? Absolutely. So it's those kinds of things where I have to be very careful with the order that I put there. And I feel like there will always be like, a, oh, you forgot this, or oh, you forgot about this scenario. And that's great. That's where I want to hear in comments on, like, this video, or in conversation within Twitch itself. Um, that these scenarios get grabbed here because a lot of these nuances might be lost on me and they're definitely going to be lost on players that I've not gotten to the end game of PSO before. So being able to talk about this in a more intelligible manner is very good. But I want you to know, chat, the relief of not having to redo that portion was so good. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it told me not recording and I was like, dude, better be recording. <laughs> I'm like, my record button is up on the stream deck. It better be there. I'm going to be so mad. But yeah, generally speaking, I will have a bias against episode 2. Maybe some people like episode 2 and they can rearrange those items to their benefit. 
but yeah. I think that covered everything I wanted to talk about, at least in terms of updates there. So if there's any comments people want to add in from personal benefits, if there are certain weapons that chat likes to use, let me know. I think there's a couple of niche ones that I need to revisit. Like there's the 125 grindable spirit weapon that's usable by forces, technically. Like, I know there are little odds and ends of, like, the Type M weapons that I have not listed here, and I have to just go back in and remind myself what their exact names are and add them to the list. But anyway, I've rambled long enough. Hopefully that helps for people that are looking to get their pre-ultimate guide discussions in. Go ahead and pause the video, I will not be going through the others today. And again, that list is very much subject to change. But hey, I think most of the things on there are relevant. So it's not that the items are bad, it's just more the priority might shift. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and remove that. I guess if people want to play some PSO, we're now in the PSO portion of PSO stream. Who would have thought? So I'm assuming Imperameter would like to play. Are there any other people that would like to hop in for some PSO? I will very briefly go get a new drink, since I was talking for a very long time. And then when I return, I think we'll get into PSO. So I'm going to put it in be right back, actually. And let me know in Parameter if you want to run any particular quests, or if you're just looking to watch today. Okay, Chan, I'm back. So yeah, let's get a... Uh... Thank you for the welcome back, Rob. <laughs> Rob is just taking in the raw PSO information. See that, Rob? You can pretend you've played for years. <laughs> Let me boot up a game and see who's available. YouTube, please. Why do you keep pausing the soundtrack? We're in Tails Adventure, Rob. Clearly the most well-known Sonic game. Yeah, we're in the every spin-off and arcade game by release date version of it. Still thinking on what I want to run, but we can start with a warm-up TTF. Sure thing in Parameter. I was thinking if we wanted to do some Endless later, we could do that. 
Uh oh. Who tried posting a link? They got deleted. Oh no, Rob got deleted. Rip Rob. I forget what the permit message is. Is it allow? I so rarely enable links. Does chat remember the stream elements one? If you avoid the www dot, I think you can share it. <laughs> How's that, Rob? <laughs> I do not remember the link to allow offhand, and none of my mods are here. Rip mods. The mini fight from the 2000s. I think I know which one you're talking about. So I think regardless here, I'm going to go ahead and get a uh, weapon out of here. Oh, you listened to the Tales Adventure back then? Nice, nice. Yeah, what is go YouTube, please? It's like literally hanging every video. Drives me wild. Maybe because it's trying to do it in HD. Let me tell it to not do that. <laughs> I I don't think the I don't think the video of being in HD will matter for Tales Adventure. Something tells me. Kimmy Wilder says KGB open up. Not quite. Oh yeah, that reminds me. I've been trying to practice with Hunter's solo play. They are very annoying to do the drill launcher. That That's going to be my new goal for the year. I I touched my controls. We went through there. What server? We're in Affinia. I think I forgot to put that in the Twitch stream. Let me add that to the title. That's a good point. So I'm still practicing using the drill launcher as solo hunter for Vault Op. But it is a very awkward timing. So that'll be my goal for this year, is to actually use Drill Launcher correctly in Vault Op. Hopping on, by the way, I ever play PS Universe? No, not quite. I was thinking at some point of trying it. So I'm thinking if people want to come in and support a Hunter, we can warm up with this. Unfortunately, I can't practice with uh, Drill Launcher in multiplayer, because the... Uh, well, up goes too fast in multiplayer to use it, so it's like literally only single player can I practice drill launcher. It's like how often do I single player hunter? Not very often. So I'm in block two. I'm not sure in parameter who you wanted to play as. If you had a Ramar or Ramarl, it's probably good enough. Private server for PSU is Clementine. I think a couple people have mentioned that before. I just haven't looked into Universe by itself. I think the problem with it is that when I went to get into it back then, I got it for multiplayer, and then I realized multiplayer was online only a little too late, because I was just so used to it from GameCube. And I was like, oh. Also, I'm way higher. That's fine. As long as you're at least 80, you could probably join in. If you're like level 50, then I can't promise you anything. Oh, you're bringing in raw moral and parameter? That's perfect then. So I'm gonna make the game Ziggy in block two. Because that's just where I like to hang out. I'm gonna make the password king, lowercase. Oh, you're around 30. Oh, that's unfortunate. I was playing a little bit off stream during XP week. If you're interested in getting a character power leveled, we can help you. But sadly, you can't join in on the ultimate games. Since they require a minimum of 80. Did you have any characters, or you only have one around 30? Yeah, we have like a basically completed character. <laughs> <laughs> if chat was curious, this character is basically, aside from the materials, which are all messed up, they're basically as optimal as I could get with them. Let's get used to our new layout there. There we go. Just for new world. Forces are actually very easy to power level. When we're going to be doing a lot more streams starting next week for PSO, unfortunately, as I said before, last week was XP week. 
Uh, so I, I was not playing as much last week since, for health reasons and other things, I just didn't get into it. Give it away the drill launcher. But definitely, I would not be opposed to doing some one-off levelings. Because I think for the most part, unlike some of the other events, Easter doesn't really matter what difficulty you play it on. So in a weird way, it actually rewards you for playing lower difficulties just to go for Easter egg grinds. So I do not mind doing that, potentially. So if there's a character you would like leveled in the future... We're good there. Have I done the board game mission? I don't think so. There's a lot of missions in PSO. I've tried them very briefly, and I went, nope. <laughs> like the, what was it, Mine Offensive in Episode 1? Oh, that was... That was horrendous. It was horrendous on Ultimate, at least. Let me think. Do I need anything else here? I have the Dark Flow, Vivian, Lava Cannon. I could bring a Gyrasol to make it faster. Is the Gyrasol in here? Question mark. Yes. So I think I got basically everything that I need. I got Vice with 60 hit. Do I need another boss killer, is the question. You know what, last swan is so broken, it's fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. Damn, why don't we do some warm-up TTF? I think I'm good to go. I think I got everything I need. My goal is to basically set my HP to zero. Uh, let me check, what are my stats at? I think I could get rid of the heavenly power I'm using. If I have a good Heavenly unit, I think I... Ooh, I have Spare Centurions. This is exactly what I wanted. So I'll give up a little bit of power, but more importantly, my luck is going to go up. So... That'll be nice. So yeah, we have basically maxed everything. If I remove Heavenly Arms, how close am I to max ATA, by the way? 209 versus... 218. So in about... 15 or so levels, I could get rid of the Heavenly Arms and just use another Centurion. And that way I could be basically near max stats. So I give up a very little amount of ATP to get more defensive power. And also luck. I prefer luck. So anyway... Do some towards the future as a warm up. We made a character specifically for the memes. What memes are we talking about? Okay, so I'll leave it up to Imperimeter to buff me. But I want to show you how stupid the vice is, though. Watch this nonsense. Goodbye. <laughs> what a weapon. Oh, no. <laughs> Just. Just casual heavenly battle. See, this is what I'm talking about. Look how easy it was. We were just talking about heavenly battle. Easy pick up. Easy. I'm gonna lower my health a little more. See, in multiplayer here, I should use a different weapon. And Disco of Rayman, we were also talking about that to some extent. Or at least we showcased that that's one of the important items. Maybe not, didn't, did not go into massive detail for it. 13 plus Disco Brave Man is very OP. So I'm Parameter just getting all the rares to showcase. Don't mind me, let me just lose some HP. Yeah, that's good enough. So I'm bringing in like the hunter end all be all weapon here. NPC quotes from mini games, interesting. I sadly did not get invincibility here, so there is a very large possibility from being rusty with Hunter that I kill myself here. Yeah, I just panic healed. I did not trust. Anyway, back to lowering HP. I had no faith, Chad. I just want you to know, I mashed that Daimei button. I've been killed by that Dragon's Head so many times, because I'm still not used to where its hitbox is. Watch the boss's HP. It's at 4,950. Oops. Look at the HP go away. 
had a feeling whenever it lifts, it's likely to damage me, so I'm gonna take a Trimate there. So yeah, I could have just used one Dimate to survive the head hit. It only does about 250. That made heals for more than that. But sometimes you just feel like bashing it. Take the evade material there. Capped on my soul atomizers, which is good. Oh, I want to showcase the nonsense of splitting slimes. So I'm going to do something a little not meta here. Don't mind me. So I'm going to do one, two, three. And I'm going to spam fire trap. Oh, it's too close to the spawn point. That's unfortunate. We'll, we'll get it right in the next room. Don't worry about that. The problem with this is that its spawn is so center in the room, it's very easy to accidentally clip its spawn point. So we showcase the other thing that you could do. If you fire a trap and you hit the original spawn point with the fire trap, uh, the slime instantly dies regardless of the damage the fire trap does. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something a little unorthodox. So Red ID cares about slimes. I don't care about these enemies. I'll let Imperameter clean up. Good luck, Imperameter. So we're going to do the same thing as before, but this time the spawn points are in the corners. So I'm going to lure all of them towards me. I'm going to mash the fire trap. All right. So now I've set it up so the third shot should duplicate them. Here we go. There's a the duplication. So the game remembers the last time you hit a button, by the way. So for some reason, for fire traps, it remembers that I just did that combo with the triple auto attack. So every fire trap is guaranteed to split them. It gives you insane XP. It it makes no sense. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and telepipe for Imperameter. It's up to Imperameter if they want to use it. But when you're playing Red ID, especially as this character specifically, it is so easy to duplicate those slimes. You turn a room that would only give maybe about 800 XP to over 4,000. So it's just kind of funny whenever that happens. Thank you for the buffs. So yeah, it's a little unorthodox due to the... Oh, I didn't get invincibility. That is so sad. It's a little unorthodox since normally you don't care about slimes, but Red ID actually gets some very good drops like Lava's Cannon from the slimes, and it's worth doing. Okay, so I'm going to hopefully get a... Ooh, no Zalore. Oh, there we go. Please don't target me. Okay, I did not get targeted. Perfect. Look at my damage. Look at the damage. Goodbye, boss. Goodbye. <laughs> Jaya is such a good weapon. It's so good. You're walking, the path is on, the only thing I'm missing now is Tempest Cloak. Sadly, Pinkle can't get it. Oh, I do like Tempest Cloak, but only in certain areas. I think it's weirdly good in uh, Forest. In Ultimate. We're gonna do the classic Confused Trap strategy. Nothing really changes here. So the trick there, and Parameter kept walking forward until the Sinnoh Red started moving forward. The reason you want to do that is so the Sinnoh Red doesn't leap at you, and it's more consistent for the other players to stri strike the Sinnoh Red. So there's like little things that are not really talked about, but they make a big difference in how easy the run is. Now, Red ID doesn't really care about Sinnohs. We only care about Sinnoh Reds. So we're going to go for, I think, just a fast uh, clear in the next room. So we don't really care about them. I can put down Confused Traps. There's a small chance they might kill each other. Maybe. We get PDs from it. So I'm going to hopefully kill this thing quick enough. We'll see, though. Yeah, unfortunately, in Ultimate, uh, they no longer have the shock weakness. So it's not as useful there. I'm going to wait a little bit. I'm going to go for potentially a fast strike with Imperameter here. So if Imperameter basically walks forward and deals with the... We're just going to keep walking forward. I'm going to keep... I'm going to freeze trap here. He's going to deal with the other thing in the corner. I'm going to wait a little bit. I'm going to put another freeze trap. I'm going to go ahead and run to the corner. So he dealt with the switch that opens up this door. And because I set up two freeze traps there, I'll never get hit. Now, sadly, there's not much I could do here to help. 
I guess I could have killed my drill launcher technically to help a little bit. So I'll try to stun the first monitor because a parameter will be on the opposite side of me. This is kind of the downside to making the game as a hunter and why it's a little awkward doing TTF in general. So I'll try to slow it down a little bit and then a parameter will take it up from there with spread needle. Yeah, early early on I feel like forces are basically the gods of PSO. So there we go, I stunned it for a parameter. So all we gotta do now is kind of keep our eye out for the next turret and deal with it there. So the hunter has a lot of waiting around. It is actually important that I hit the red turret that pops up here to make sure that A, it despawns quickly. Oh, we're getting a triple monitor. We might not even need it. Oh. Uh. Maybe? There we go. See that? Look at that. We one cycled. One cycle. Yeah, we did it with the hunter start. That does not happen often. Now, I'm kind of back and forth what weapon I want to use here. I don't think I have the right weapons to deal with this boss. I need like an Excalibur or something. So I could use Lava's Cannon for a little bit. Do I have my... I have a Vivian. Let me use Vivian. I don't have like a good AoE option. I'd probably prefer Excalibur here if I had it. Nice kill. Thank you for sticking around, Rob. <laughs> Don't mind me, just got reduced to like 20 HP. That's fine. Mega 27? That's actually... That's actually good. What? <laughs> I'll take that. Die fluids, I don't care about them. Maxed out on moon atomizers, so should be good there. So, we'll see what Imperimeter does to clear this room. There's a couple strategies. You could Frozen Shooter in the corner and then punish. Looks like he went for the Frozen Shooter strat. I respect that. So once you kill the Centaur, the rest of the room is free. So I could just kind of shut down the rest of the room. To give Imperimeter a little bit of a break. So from here, what I've learned is if I am not the player going to the left, because I'm not planning to go to the left, I'm going to freeze trap on the left and then walk over here. The reason I want to do that is that if the other player is going left, rip and parameter. I was going to go back and revive, but I already escaped all. Thank you for the follow. I do appreciate it. Is if I go slightly to the left and then right, I can freeze trap all four. And then that ends up uh, being super helpful there. Unfortunately, I think a parameter got tagged by something. Rip and parameter. So typically, you would take a telepipe here from the other player, but since we're playing Red ID, we actually get an item called Psycho Wand, which is an endgame wand for people not aware for forces. We have one chance, or two chances at it the whole run. The first was that sorcerer that was in this room, and the second was over here. So for safety reasons, I'm going to try mate to make sure I don't take damage here and die. So I'm going to put a little freeze trap here for this sorcerer. There we go. So sadly, no Psycho Wand. Could you imagine if that was Psycho Wand? Well, thank you for the lurk. Okay, so what we want to do from a Hunter perspective, Last Swan Broken. So I like it as Rangers, I like it as Hunters. Some things never change. We're actually making really good time, given that I wasn't being the most helpful for Imperimeter. Imperimeter was solo carrying caves, as I was explaining things. I did dupe the slimes, though, in my defense. I duped a lot of them for free XP. But sadly, no rare slimes, which is what I want from it. Now, I gotta be very careful where my position is after this fight ends. So I need to make sure I'm basically only on the upper portions. So technically, if Imperimeter has a really, really good Heaven Striker, it's actually possible with Zalor to kill the boss without dealing with any of the spinners. But I could play it safe and just be the one that deals with the spinners as they come out. I guess I should have asked Imperimeter, which they're more comfortable with. The other one is very risky. It involves basically using Sacrifice the whole time. Where I could play it safe. But playing it safe usually results in me getting hit with at least one tech. So I'm in a good position to do either strategy here. So I can start in the corner. Oh, Imperimeter is able to heal before then. That's actually huge. So Imperimeter is in a good position to get some Heaven Striker shots in. So I guess I could just deal with the boss here. And yeah, they're going for the risky strats. I'm going to try to pump the damage here. Good job, Imperimeter. So as long as I'm like behind the head, I can target the boss without hitting the spinners. And that's my rule of thumb for new players, trying to figure out how to make it work. And then I'm also in a good position to get some pot shots on falls here. 
So here's the fun thing. If you start go if you start watching walking in a cardinal direction like right about here, usually you'll dodge the ability that's used by the boss there. So see how it hit in parameter, but I dodged. It's the secret of cardinal directions. I'm actually just gonna go for burst here. Parameter going with the Excalibur. I respect that. I respect that a lot. I love the DPS on that. And that's also a good way to stop laser. If boss is dead, laser never <laughs> never never spawns. So as long as the parameter uh Zalures and then immediately trimates, they should be fine. Otherwise, faults will end up being uh quite a bit of damage to poor and parameter here. I had I, I had a good I had a good feeling the boss is gonna target one of us hard. And again, last one is my little spinner clear. Everything else. I reach on enough HP. I might not need to try mate here. Oh, I got really unlucky. Okay. Since I'm unlucky, I'm gonna start moving to hopefully not get double hit here. I did get double hit. That's unfortunate. I need to get a more consistent movement pattern to stop that from happening. Oh well. <laughs> Welcome, Tiggy. Getting trolled by falls as usual over here. Ooh, that was good progress here. So I'm gonna wait a little bit and then move and see if this is good enough. Okay, that was a little better. Parameter will keep me topped off. So the boss should be targetable when they come back down, which is really good for us. Ooh, and Heaven Striker damage, that was disgusting. I think Imperameter did like 1.8 or something just then. So let's skip that entire phase. There we go. I I'm mostly happy with how that went. Hopefully you're doing well, Tiki. Maybe we'll get a red ring and no longer need it. When he hit 50 dark heaven striker, holy. That would explain the DPS. Cause I was like, that was a lot of damage. <laughs> it's like that like that that seemed like a lot. Like I know Heaven Striker does big damage, but even for that, you know, that's a great item pickup from Imperameter there. So yeah, we we completed it in about a little before 13.37. So I'm, I'm happy with that. That's pretty solid for two players. And given that we did extra spawns, I'm okay with it. The only- we we fast did the Sinnoh room, but we spent more time on like the slime room and stuff like that. Hopefully you're doing well, Tiggy. Were there any runs you wanted to do tonight, Tiggy? We were just doing some warm-up TTF. Jaya is such a, such a weapon. You know what I learned the other day that made me really sad? Why does the Huka Seal only have 1301 ATP? Why does she have less ATP than the Humar? Can we talk about this? An alternative between TTF and... Sweep up 10 on even beat? What's, what's sweep up 10 usually give you? I'm assuming that's something in episode 4. Yeah, I figured it was sweep up operation. Also, rip my money because I'm playing Hunter. So this character I was just looking to level in general. Yeah, I know it's on RBR, but what are what are people doing with it in episode four? Oh, it's a lot of ass arcs. Oh, okay. See, there we go. I needed it translated. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, I, I know there's things in episode four, but I'm like, what are we hunting? Wasn't sure if it was Dorfon or something else. At Stark makes more sense. Yeah, kind of like what I was talking about earlier. I think it might be worth putting spirit type SW slash J sword on my list. I think I talked about uh, charge type guns very briefly on our uh, other list. So it looks like it is odd beat. So Tiki, if you would like to help this character gradually level, I would be playing the Hugh Seal for a while. My goal is to be better at Hunters gradually. I think I did okay.
And at least I'm using traps. So I could I can at least walk away with the confidence that I, I actually did use traps fairly often. So we're gonna go ahead and make the game Ziggy again. Yeah, I was playing with this character with uh Antares Convoy slash Chris from the chat. So this character's been gradually leveling up. Yeah, Smart Link has been like a lifesaver on this character, as is the S parts. This S part is the reason I'm able to get away with a slightly lower hit Dark Flow. I mean, 60 is still good and all, don't get me wrong, but... Yeah, let's do this. So we'll give Tiki a moment or so if they'd like to hop in. We've now moved to Sonic Fighters for people that were curious. You know what? I'll do one 1k gamble. I'm bored. <laughs> We're just gonna choose to believe whatever today's is. I got sword. Well, it wasn't a trap vision, so I'll consider that a win. Getting supersonic is impossible in Sonic the Fighters. I have never played it before. I think I've seen gameplay of it, though. I think he needs a few minutes. No problem. We'll wait a couple minutes then. I get to check if there's anything even worth picking up. Not really. Oh, so that reminds me. It's Thursday for God Technique. Oh, okay. Interesting. I'll do one more then. I always forget. I'm like some... I'm re Fridays and Saturdays, I think, are the days I usually want to do it. But for me, I, I don't recall why I gamble anymore. At least on normal difficulty, you have to make it to Metal Sonic, losing no rounds, and then lose no rounds to that, che that cheater. Okay. Poor Tiggy. Traumatized forever. Well, that reminds me. I'm using one of the uh, setups I went over in the guide. You think you remember episode 4, boss laser damage? I was gonna say, for me, that's challenge impossible. I must have done that quest, like, literally hundreds of times on stream, and I never remember what it is. I'm so bad at numbers. I'm just like, what what hit point total do I need to live? And I'm like, yes. Yeah, because that was the thing. I, I was about to say, I remember that one of them did more damage, and it's chambered in. Thank you. Because I remember checking it before and being really confused. And then I'm like, wait a minute, do they actually do different damage? So for me, that that looked correct. The chat can feel free to correct if they want to. 25 hit Jaya. So sadly, I don't have a good Jaya on this character. That's probably the only thing I need to upgrade. I actually have some really good Jayas on every other character but this one. Even my Humar, I think, has like a 30 percenter. But let's be honest, my Humar needs love, so <laughs> he could keep that. We're not going to take away his only item. I mean, I could bring in Drill Launcher to showcase it, maybe. Both of my boss kill weapons for Vault Up were there. No worries, Tiggy. Yeah, we had a conversation about items at the beginning of the stream, so we're we're still getting warmed up here. I figured that would tide people over as an unofficial guide for a while. But yeah, there's no way I wanted to go through the Hunter in the Forest. I'm like, I'm like, no, 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 no. We'll, we'll talk about the Hunter in the Forest when I'm ready in a guide. Ranger, I feel like 80 to 90% confident. Hunter in Forest, I'm like 60%. Ooh, Tiggy rocking the level 200 character. Look at that. Look at that. I'm using my shortcuts, chat. Ooh. My HP is low. I believe this one is the log off. Yeah, there we go. So I'm using that with the shortcuts. So I'm hitting like left trigger, right trigger, and then square equivalency on my controller. I was going to say, can you imagine Tiggy just walks in, gets a red ring, leaves, <laughs> refuses to elaborate? <laughs> I believe in Tiggy and getting another red ring. <laughs> then Tiggy's like, why don't we do RT? Then you get another, uh, 
Parents any gene flow. You also get Gal Griffin Wing for extra spite. There we go. There we go. Yeah, you hit me to the perfect HP. Thank you, monsters. That was so convenient. I appreciate them. Yeah, I should probably be rainbow batoning here. I think he's using Disco Brave Man, which is the optimal one, but I just love Rainbow Baton too much. Speaking of Disco Brave Man, congratulations, Siggy. Yeah, and then if I have Disco out, I'll just use Disco on the Freeze Trap sometimes. Another Mono Maid, interesting. Did I seriously not get Mag Invincibility again? Come on. That's so unlucky. Isn't it like an 85% chance of triggering? This is just super unlucky. And I died. <laughs> That's about what I expected. Rip me. Oh well, we'll drain our HP. One day, chat, I will get the uh, invincibility trigger when I actually need it. That, the boss died so quickly, I don't even think it lasted more than a frame. <laughs> like, honestly, that was the, one of the fastest post-shout kills I've seen in a while. It, 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 it just basically, like, froze for a moment to go into its different animation. And then just boom, gone. Okay, I'm gonna try to go for the fire trap setup again. Again, this slime is very annoying because its spawn point is so in the center of the room. I don't know if it's worth doing. Do one, two, three, set up the fire trap. I mean, maybe if it comes over here, I can get it to work. I think this will work. There we go. Look at that, look at that dumb XP. <laughs> See, I get to mess around and do whatever I want. Just, just so chat is clear, the, the red slime is worth it. I'm fishing for red slimes for chat clarity. Wondering why I'm messing around with slimes. It isn't just obsession with the triple trap setup, which to be fair, I do have an obsession with. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to walk into the next room. I'm going to let chat kill these things. I have no interest in helping them. I'm going to help myself to some red slime, though, hopefully. Come on, red slime. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to walk into the middle of the room. I'm going to do one, two, three. Mash fire trap, mash fire trap. Let's go. Look at that XP. Look at that XP. We got 20,000. How much are we going to get now? Oh, 23,000 and, and rising. Oh, 25,000. So yeah, I got I got literally over 5k doing that just then. Like that's that's a pretty sizable amount of XP. Also, I should probably set up telepipe on my main menu. I guess that's the only weakness of the current setup. Set up Rainbow Baton here. I could go back for the power material, I don't really want to. Oh now I have invincibility. So I'm gonna do a couple of discas into Jaya. It should basically be GG for this boss. I did not mean to press Masetta again, but that's fine. I should have respected Tiggy's damage. Rip that 10,000. You, you died for literally nothing. I'll do Relay Shell, nice. I'll go pick that up. Tiggy with the classic Confuse Trap. I'm gonna reapply the Confuse Trap, and I'm gonna apply it again. Ooh, Tiki going with the freeze trap setup. I kind of like that. So yeah, the Sinnohs, the Sinnoh Reds drop uh, a Gito 1975, I believe, which is the one that upgrades into that legendary katana and seek my master. So technically, we're doing a lot of Uber runs right now between Psycho One to Gito. I believe uh, Volt Op gives Heavenly HP, if I remember correctly. So surprisingly useful drops in most areas. Do relay shells okay? So we're basically just gonna kill the Sinnohs and run here. Do 
That was a deletion. All right, so I'm going to run. Yeah, we're going to line up. We're just going to run, run, run. Freeze trap and run. Freeze trap and pray. Tiggy does so much damage. Tiggy might actually just kill these outright. Tiggy's a monster. <laughs> Tiggy, Tiggy is an absolute monster, confirm. Although, because those were killed, <laughs> we get the little challenge mode of getting through there. Tiggy too strong, please nerf. <laughs> I should probably heal myself. But we'll, we'll leave our health a bit lower for now. So what I can do here is I'm going to target with the uh, last one here. I love the monitors didn't load correctly for me for some reason just then. That was interesting. I'm going to slow it down for the ranger of the party. I think that works somewhat well. Then I can just stand around regening health because I don't really care about my health total. I'm happy to finally be able to use the Huka Seal. For a long time, she was one of those ones where she was just struggling to be useful multiplayer, but I think she's got enough now. Chat will avenge me on that missile strike. Use the Dark Flow there. That's kind of nice. Definitely easier to do when there's multiple players. I am too scared to do that strategy, so I respect Tiki for it. Oh yeah, I don't think I have Star Atomizer set up, do I, in my customizes? I do not. Huh. I should probably set that up on this character in the future. So, always room for improvement there. trap please I got trolled proximity betrayed me Did this keeps all really drop over there damn I gotta go for that actually I just use mine oh well take the mana mate Take the dime eight. Actually, don't. Well, could have used it. It's fine. <laughs> I was going to say, you three fight to the death. Tiggy with the Master Raven, nice. Oh, that's an item I missed on the list for situational. That should be on the Hunter for sure, especially the cast. See that? Tiggy inspiring the list. I think the problem with that is that I literally still don't have one. I got one my entire time of playing PSO, and I got trolled. I have, ne I have never seen another one again. Just wanted to know. In literally hundreds of attempts, I have not seen one. I got like seven less ones though. So pretty much all my characters have them. I turned one of them into dual bird. Maybe one day I'll pay for a Master Raven to enjoy the spinner life. And you just want to press one button and delete the spinners. Okay, so I'm in a pretty good position, potentially, to just punish the boss here. As long as I focus one of the heads, I should be good here. And Tiggy could do whatever. I'm not going to bother with the spinners. See, I'm in a pretty good position there. Wait, was that the last song? Or did it just freeze? It just froze, okay. I was going to say, that was a short soundtrack if that was it. Yeah, chip damage.
Ooh. Ooh, that berserk damage. Ooh, disgusting. Disgusting. I think he had enough. I think he's like, you will do this fight optimally. <laughs> you do not have a choice in the matter. I guess I could hover my vices. See if the boss cooperates. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at that damage. Oh, look at that damage. You're in like fireball range, Falls. You better look out. We're going to delete you. Goodbye. Wow. <laughs> the boss was actually kind to me. I got to use vices. That's so rare that, I'm, that the boss actually is kind to me as the hunter. Holy, deleted. 60 hit vice says no. <laughs> I love how Tiggy just crosses his arms on the profile. Like, you better give me red ring. <laughs> but like, that was a convincing run. What? Wow, that was 11 17. Wow. What a run with only three people. And again, that's with me messing around with slimes. Holy. What a, what a savage, savage deletion of falls. Also, rip that uh, money that I did not need to spend on that worm boss. So put away the d relay shell. Yeah, I gotta get used to Drill Launcher. It's kind of weird because, like, I don't see it mentioned in the weapon itself. Like, it says it's special as Pierce, but that's, like... It might technically be true, but that's not quite how that works. Like, I didn't realize for the longest time the shot actually splits like a shotgun when you do the special attack. Because reading, reading it in the wiki, I did not know it could multi-target. Like, I had a feeling you could hit, like, two things that are lined up, but not, like, actually, like, shotgun spread. And I was like, oh. Now it makes sense why people use that on the, uh, solo fights. Everyone was better than most of my four-man runs this week. Well, welcome, Hoopweed. Hope you're doing well. That was just an absolute... <laughs> that, was, that was savagery on Falls. I kind of feel bad for Falls. Like, that was... that was embarrassing for Falls. Not their best performance. Damn, they basically got one cycled on every phase. That was disgusting. Dark fails. <laughs> I like that. Let's, let's do another one. That was... that was so fast. I guess that's what happened when Hugh cast happens with Ranger and then me doing whatever. Oh, come on, YouTube. Please stop pausing every video. I beg of you. So hopefully you're doing well, Hoopween. So yeah, I'm still 12 levels away from the potential Ren Ring. But once I get that, I'm going to be pretty happy. Give a moment to hydrate. Did you want to hop in, Hoopweed, by the way? Before we start? And tonight, no worries. Well, we appreciate your support, regardless. We are talking about items at the beginning of the stream. So, actually, that reminds me before I go further. Black... Or Master Raven, I need to put somewhere. Uh, might put that under boss optimization. I was gonna say Black Raven. <laughs> like that's not quite right. Okay, let's uh, continue here. <laughs> there we go. See, I got it all shortcutted now. <laughs> yeah, we were trying to talk about uh, items that are useful for rangers tonight for the most part. But I'm still working on the list for... Uh, forces and hunters. And definitely if there's any useful items that you can think of. We, we talked all the way from like your charge Vulcans to like... Pretty much everything, honestly. So we were going to take opinions from anybody that was around. But yeah, we're preparing very gradually for a guide later. Oh, 
finally have invincibility. I'm tired, I'm tired of getting bodied by Dragon's Head. <laughs> I run under its feet. I guess I could go more to the side to avoid it, but it does happen kind of often. Now I could just do this. Bonk. <laughs> I could just spin in circles for a bit. Yeah, I was looking for kind of like those situational items or even just like recommended order of top tier items. We're going to com uh, combine it a little bit with the price guide and talk about where you could potentially get those. I was worried I did it too early, but that still worked. Goodbye, Dragon Balls. Oh, uh, it wouldn't let me emote there. Oh, both on drop. Yeah, so I wanted to capture all of that information. So it's going to be like a work in progress. I'll probably share a couple of the lists on uh, the Discord once it gets cleaned up a little more. Let me see if I can draw this slime over here. Come to me, slime. Yeah, come here. Yeah, come here. Let's dupe you. Yeah, dupe in time. Give me some items. Give me some items. Perish slime. Rip Tiggy. gonna say the only enemy I care about is the lily in the middle because it lets me go right to slime hunting. That's all I care about. Chat can deal with that room. I'm here for the real kill. Come on rare slimes. I need XP and I also potentially want PDs. Oh I didn't do the dupe correctly. Oops. I must have shot something and not realized it. Rip the dupe. I have a suspicion it's outclassed by having struck it down at 9% of the time. Probably? Yeah, those are the things that I've really sat there and calculated. I'm definitely interested, though. I think the problem is I still don't have a Master Raven. So I, I can't even do, like, my own tests with, like, non-optimized gear, how it feels. I should probably heal here. As I get out mag no mag invincibility, sadly. I got knocked down, that's so sad. So if I hold it's a down and right, I think I'll end up where the boss item is during this little cutscene. Yeah. Look at that. Boss item <laughs> obtained. Optimization. You know what? I'm gonna confuse trap them again. I want more. <laughs> it is drop rate up, so in theory I could get PDs. Oh, why didn't they kill each other? What was that? 329 and did not die there. Unfortunate. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> so that'll be kind of a thing that'll be worked on over the next week or two. Just sharing the list with people that have experience and talking about if things should be adjusted and slowly adding in the PD costs for things. Uh-oh, Tiki's ready to hit the delete button. I think it's over. Uh... Mech gun, please. Why did you not hit the freeze trap there? Yeah, I got through. Yeah, I'll freeze them. Tiki should just kill the rest. I was gonna say, Tiki still has low HP, so Dark Flow is definitely just gonna delete there. Uh, I'm gonna go for this. Yeah, I'm still not feeling brave enough on this room. I, got, I gotta learn to be brave with uh, coming in here with low HP. There's too many times I'm just not able to delete the screens fast enough. 
some of that's just from single player experience. So sadly, I don't have uh, an Excalibur on this character, so I'll just use Vivian. I should be out of dying to random zap range HP, as long as I don't get multi-hit. I'm definitely out of missile kill range. Nice. Yeah, the problem with Hoopweed is that last one doesn't shoot the trap. So I don't really have a way to detonate them other than uh, mechs. I went over this last time, I think, with somebody else. I wish last one actually hit the traps consistently, but it really does not. I messed with the character's height because people were saying it had to do with character height. It did not. It did not help. Need a sack ray gun? Probably. So yeah, unless I'm using like a red handgun for a solo play at the time, I don't usually carry an option. Mech guns are kind of awkward if I don't get the instant trap shoot. Because they leave you pretty open if you whiff. I think I'm willing to go this way actually. I'm more just greeting for the treasure than anything else there. Because I saw Tiki had the other platform already. Good enough. You drain in the HP. I respect that. Yeah, as much as I want to do like Vice on this upcoming phase, I don't like that it results in me not damaging the next phase. Like this upcoming phase, I'm not worried about doing damage. It's more the other one when we get bad RNG, not doing like 500 to 800 damage really blows. Hmm. I want to stay over here because I really don't want to be out of range of the boss on the next phase. I think Parameter got knocked down so they're able to move around. So I'm going to go for the left head and that'll put me in an okay position for sniping. In the next phase. I'm actually going to move a little closer here and make sure I'm in a better position. <laughs> I recognize the chat is about to kill it within like either a quarter of a second or half a second. Yeah, so it's like I get free chip damage there. I'd rather chip this phase out and kill the other phase slightly faster. Unfortunate, I target this spinner. Okay, well, if the boss cooperates, I'll do the vice strategy. Otherwise, I'm going to use last one for my ranged weapon. I could bring in Dual Bird for more range, technically, I guess. Let's see, will you cooperate? Oh, you're going to cooperate. Nice. <laughs> the boss got one attack? Wow, that was, 
That was disgusting. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Falls. This is post damage patch world. I'm so sorry. I mean, when when I'm in range to charge Vulcan, it does do a lot of damage if I crit. Wow, 11 minutes. And that's with me messing around. That's kind of insane. Here I am, like, farming slime for red ID. I'm not going for optimal strats at all. I want that red slime. But not punished. You know what? If I sell this armor, I'll actually go money neutral. Might as well just pick them up then. Yeah, I'm on a uh, red ID. So they get red ring, um, slime for lapis cannon, Ajito 1975, psycho wand, D roll a shell. I think heavenly HP on vault up. Kill all the gill chicks. I don't recall. What did they drop in Red ID? Music, please. Oh, a heart of item? Oh. I don't, I don't care about that. That's probably why I don't remember. I, I never farm for those. I'm not in a rush to complete the game. I'm at the point where I'm kind of happy with where I'm at. I don't really need to speed it. Like, if I ever hit 200 with all my characters, I will 100% stop playing the game. So I'm not in a rush to get, like, all S ranks either. I'm mostly happy with where I'm at. There's only, like, a couple things I want. Most of them are Psycho Wand and S rank Demons. That's pretty much it. I don't think I really want to play with Hell Needle. I'm not a fan. I think I got everything else. Yeah, I'm at the point where it's just like... I, I'm not really gonna gear up all the characters. Once I get those items, I'm officially done with PSO. But we'll see. Oh, only A rank. It's he's never impressed. You're in for gold Mila. Yeah, like that's an item I'll never go for. It's one of those things that's like I'm gonna pick one Uber rare, it's not gonna be Seal J Sword. It'll be Psycho Wand. I have an okay chance of coming across it since I play enough uh different IDs. And even technically now we're psycho wanding. I'm gonna start doing endgame goals at some point. What would that be? Like. Congratulations on the level ups, by the way. Lame and Heaven Striker sets up hunting. That's fair. I was contemplating if I wanted to put that in as a separate category in the guide. I did briefly mention it in our earlier part of the video, but there's going to be a lot of duplicates. Welcome, Nate. Appreciate the lurk. Also, I need to start draining my HP. We're just dying too quickly. <laughs> the gear is all here, I think. Oop, too early. Goodbye, Rappi. Rock fluid, I don't care about that. <laughs> no invincibility again. I'm like, there's only two bosses I actually care about invincibility. This is one of them. As Ranger, I don't care. As Hunter, I do care. 
Whatever. I'll go more sideways, I guess. Yeah, I was on a long break. I think between, like, health reasons and just definitely general PSO burnout. It's one of those things where I'm not excited to hit level 200. I like playing with chat, but at the same... Wow, we got down to 84 HP. That was interesting. But it's just kind of one of those things where... If I actually get the endgame items, I will probably stop. I'll still go for them every now and then, help the team out. Like, I always enjoy uh, Red Ring and stuff on other characters. So I have no problem doing some of those runs. Last time I logged on was the Light and Helcles wallet. Oh no. Shout out to Helcleave. Oh, the slime went the wrong way. Oh, I can't do anything with that, I don't think. I think this is still too close to their spawn. Oh no, it's not. Good. Duplicate for me. Bring me beautiful PDs and XP. I'll perish. Uh, this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> don't mind me, just trying to juke the AI. Okay, chat already killed the Lily, which is the only thing that I care about in here. I heard something drop. Sacred Guard? Okay. I'll probably jump in it a little bit. Oh, come on, Rare Slime. I believe in you. You can spawn once for me. There we go. It's duping time. Yes, beautiful dupes. You're already dead. Oh, or not. The last one was not a fire trap. There we go. <clears throat> Seriously? No oh, invincibility. So sad. One day, chat. We'll be saying I'm not burned out per se. But on my OSU I go grind. Oh, the the drum beat game. I've really been thinking about grinding anything else. That's fair. I did think about that. Oops. I was on holding bottom right there. Suboptimal rap movement. I'm banned. For hoop wheat, I will throw more confused traps down for the guild chicks. Since I got nothing better to do while I'm here. I like making them punch each other regardless. But I don't usually go for a full clear there. I think I stepped forward slightly when I shot, which would be my fault. I want to be on this side of them. I'm just helping Tiggy just one-punch them a little more. There we go. I was like, I'm pretty sure I froze them and I realized there were so many enemies they were off the list. I was like, never mind, I did freeze them.
I mean, I could go for the Tiki Strat here. Oh, now I definitely don't want to go for it. Safety Panic Heal. Ooh! I healed just enough. <laughs> right, there we go. I live long enough for the invincibility trigger. Look at now I can dark flow. Now I don't mind dark flowing. Uh oh. Slap. Golf for Uno, welcome back. Going too fast, no worries. Come on, something interesting. A Gladius. Eh. I mean, if it had something, it could have been a 50 hit Gladius. That might have been interesting. Maybe. I did not trust myself to not get hit by that claw. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's like, I have been one shot by those way too many times. Oh, thank you. All right, Tiki's gonna go up there. So I'm just gonna go for the greedy box grab. I'm not looking to help here at all. Get away from me. I'm checking boxes. PSU forces no Miga. I was gonna say they know it in PSO. It's just not very useful, sadly, in most scenarios. So you will never see me use it. Outside of like trolling in episode two. I think I'm good here. One second, I'm gonna check this song. Man, YouTube, please. <laughs> For a video player, it really does not like auto-playing videos. I'll let chat activate the boss while I fix this. There we go. Yeah, some some folks use it in PSO also. Uh, usually the sorcerers, but technically also the lilies. I am not a fan of that. Well, I'm a fan in the sense that I like their version compared to the stupid murder lilies in episode two. I will never not complain about those chat. I really hate that enemy in design philosophy and how it's used in the game. Hate it. I wish it just did elemental damage like it did prior to ultimate. I don't have a problem with that version. Yeah, I mean, it's fairly common in PSL. They're just mostly reserved for higher level areas. I think also since you're uh, prior to ultimate, you're not going to see a lot of the nonsense of how much stuff has insta-kill. I blinked. It went from like 8,000 to 300. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't blink twice, or else I wouldn't be holding the right direction here. Oh, I did like another 1,000 or so. Hmm. This is going to be a little rough, I think. You know what? I, I could have been a bit brave, braver with that vice. So the worst thing that would have happened is I would have used a dime eight there. I chickened out. That can blame me on that one. Okay. Ripping parameter. Ooh. Unfortunate. That was basically max distance. Seriously? I'm being targeted? What? Chan, I would love to know what exact movement you could do to avoid getting, uh, 
double hit by that boss there. Like, I got killed while moving again. I would just like to state that. So it definitely was not a lack of movement that killed me. I died while moving. Oh, it feels weird. It's like a combination of character height and maybe width. I don't know what it is. There's certain characters, maybe it's the animation in their neutral compared to walking or running that causes me to get double hit more often. Not sure. That's like the only thing making me consider getting HP materials. Stupid double hit randomly. Like other times, like I'll just run, like if I'm running full screen, I could do this when I'm in solo. I don't want to do that because I'm going to get other players hit unnecessarily. So in not wanting to run around the arena to dodge it, I usually get double hit, even though I do move. So I wonder if it has to specifically be the running animation, so it's not good enough to just walk. There's something about the run itself that causes it to dodge. That's the kind of stuff I want to focus on <laughs> when I play PSO. Because that stuff annoys me when I get inconsistency like that. Or find like the perfect movement pattern to dodge that shot. Yeah, because I, I did, I took one, two, I think I took two steps. Because I saw my animation because her leg was in a certain position. I still got double hit. It's very annoying. I need, like, to have, like, a buffer timing or figure something out so I'm not just always running around the arena. Because, again, I don't want to I don't want to accidentally cause another player to get double hit because I'm running. So that's where I'm looking for something like... If I see the certain animation of the boss, that's the exact visual cue for me to hold for X seconds kind of things. It's kind of like how I dodge the laser shots in the air. Yeah. Like, dodging laser shots in the air, I realized was not really RNG after playing for a long time. And I'm getting much better at dodging those. Because we have had several falls runs where I do not get hit by the laser. Because if I move forward at a very specific scenario, I do not get hit by the boss whatsoever. Sonic's Schoolhouse is next. There we go. There are very few scenarios where lower HP is beneficial. Uh, kind of. I'm still a, not a proponent of higher HP because I am really tired of getting one shot by tornadoes in the different boss fights or getting murdered by Sinnohs because my defense isn't high enough. I can name a lot more scenarios where higher HP will kill me if I'm not optimally guild geared, to be honest with you, which is why I don't bother. I'd rather take the knockdown when you're getting hit by Fire Blast from Falls, for example, than stand up and die if I'm, like, barely past the threshold. Like, there's there are a lot of scenarios where I just die instantly if I have too much HP. And the kind of the sad part is I'm past one of the HP thresholds. I like hovering around 1100 normally, or 1000, because that way Baran's doesn't insta-kill me, which I find very useful for single player, but... Sadly, we passed that threshold a while back. Once I'm past the threshold, I might as well as go further with it, I guess is the mentality with it. But there are really annoying HP thresholds in this game that I don't appreciate. You're the first one there in the sun person can just to, to avoid the tornado. Of course. Of course. But I mean, like, that's just one of many, many, many attacks that will lead to me instantly dying. Even stupid stuff like Dorfon. Like, I'll randomly die to Dorfon because I have too much HP. Like, there's a lot of really... E like, I can name, like, a million scenarios where I will die because I have too much HP. Lower HP, it's more like I get double hit by falls. I guess sometimes I don't stand up versus falls on the Grant's attack, which is sometimes annoying. But technically I could just equip Light Resist if I really care about that.
I, I'm just saying, like, I, there are some, there is a big reason why I did not use HP materials. Once I'm past, like, 1400 health, I don't think it matters. I might as well just go to, like, 1800 or so. But until then, I'm like, I will go kicking and screaming to that health total. I do not want. How much the power level my phone to roll? I mean, we're not going to do it today. We would just do it in general in the future if we wanted to do it. You can't see how that would be an issue. I mean, that's... I, I'm not even sure what to say to that. I'll just go, okay. <laughs> As I said before, it's it, it, especially public games, people will not have the right gear and you will die. So like, I understand if you're talking about a fully optimized standpoint that there's no downside, but I'm talking from a, I'm not 200, I don't have red ring. I'm playing with players that do not have these things. That happens all the time. Yeah. So if those things happen, because I have higher HP, I will die. That's more common on the cast. That one's more specific to raw cast though. I don't have that problem on like, Hugh or like Humar. It's specifically once you start going into like the insane territory of 2000 HP, that things will just kill you. I love being looped to death by Sinnoh Beats. That's my favorite. That is my favorite way to die with bad defense and high HP. Cause I mean, for me, for the longest time, the Rumar was literally unplayable until I got the right setup. Like, I, I'm, I kid you not, until I had, like, Stink Frame plus Red Ring, miserable, miserable time. After that, then it was fine. And it's just, like, if you have really high HP, as if you're geared very appropriately, it's not as bad. Like, there, you can mitigate some of it in some of the normal scenarios that it pops up in, but it's, like, oof. Oof on that road to 200 without the gear. Come on, slimes. Aw, oh, nothing interesting there. Ooh, I might have killed them too quickly. Oh, I guess that's fine. Seriously? <laughs> this boss is also kind of a problem with it. I gotta be careful here. If I'm at like... I want to say it's 1350. Those lasers will also randomly insta-kill me. As I said before, there are so many scenarios like in where you just die for having too much health. Like that multi-hitting you is hilarious. I think I have like an 1800 rocket seal. She gets sent to like... <laughs> She can either die instantly or take like 800 or so. I find it very funny. I just don't like that there's attacks in PSO that will just instantly kill you because you don't get knocked down. It requires a lot more adjustment. We're hoping that players don't mess something up with playing multiplayer. You know what? I'll just confuse them again. Hmm. Yeah, I think if I'm gonna use HP materials, it'll be... It, it'll depend how close I am to like the 1400, 1600, 1800 cutoffs. And whether or not I want to deal with certain things. Like, I don't think I want to use HP materials on like Rawcast, for example. I could see it on like forces. Like there's some I don't have any issue with because their HP is so low that it doesn't matter. But some of the other characters, I'm like, hmm. Maybe, maybe when I'm like 190 with the character, I'll care a little less when I got the stats to back it up. Brands. Yeah, 
Goodbye, enemy. I don't play enough of episode 2 to really know. I'm assuming Del Beaters can double hit you after a certain HP threshold. I just refuse on principle to play high HP in episode 2. So I'm assuming that is also potentially a thing. I think it's less of an issue in single player because they increase the iframes. So I totally get it from that perspective too. Like, I definitely don't disagree with you in single player. I don't think high HP matters as much in single player. It's more multiplayer, where just like stupid stuff happens, you just die instantly. It's really infuriating. Get rid of these. Ooh, do I gear a soul? Maybe? Another turret spawn. That's awkward. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, but I mean, I think you're, I, I think you're highlighting exactly what I'm talking about, though. Like it. Mistakes will happen, but like mistakes are now lethal just because you have more HP. <laughs> so I don't think we're disagreeing on that point. I'm just saying it's like way more common in multiplayer to the point where I have seen it happen. Not every game, but it, it happens enough. And I'm like, oh, it's because you hit like 1900 HP, GG. I think the only time I'm like genuinely happy for high HP is probably Baran's. Cause that that monster's damage makes no sense. Like that that, that monster is actually just a big troll. <laughs> that thing is harder than Dark Falls for sure. I don't understand why. Durandal, don't need that. Yeah, I think my sweet spot for HP is gonna be around 1600. So in theory, I could take more HP materials to get there a little sooner. I don't know if I'll ever take this character to a point where some of the more annoying enemies will matter. I know, for example, like the spinners in Episode 4 will also kill me randomly if I have too much HP and defense. It's just kind of like one... It's just those things that just get really annoying to kind of micromanage. I could test it a little more to see where those cutoffs are. But I know, like, I am so happy being, like, an 1100 HP character in episode four boss fight and the spinners knock me down compared to players player movement they walk with me and potentially those spinners pop up and i die instantly because like four spinners hit me at once i'm like that that has happened quite often actually when we were getting a little better at it with coordinating since we could at least talk on stream but i mean like these are things where like it impacts basically every major boss fight with some exceptions. I don't think it matters on Dragon, for example. It matters a little bit on uh, Episode 2 Dragon, but Episode 2 Dragon's its own thing. It, it could freeze you randomly. That's more of a problem than the damage from HP. Get rid of these. Welcome, Diz. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, so it's kind of like the thing where I'll play the Force specifically to uh, be around a thousand or less as long as possible. And that's where that mentality comes into play. So that way, for example, Episode 4 Laser always knocks me down. And, you know, I now have items to potentially mitigate the problem by having higher HP because I finally have like Al Griffin Wing. But it's like the fact that you have to gear around the you have more HP to me is just insanity. Like they just, it, it screams against all logic and reasoning to me. I, like I have to have items to deal with the fact that I have more HP. It should be the opposite. I should be able to use less items. 
but I, I don't feel very rewarded for doing that. Game, please. Let's go over here. Oh my gosh. What is this falls pattern? Oh, spinner body blocked. What a pro. So it's like I would always I would always like hug that threshold. So major attacks would always knock down. It's kind of like you need enough HP to not get killed, but it's like kind of like hitting that sweet spot where like I don't accidentally get ultra murdered by attacks would be nice. Ooh, full screen. Can't do anything about that. Ooh, nice. So hopefully you are doing well, this. This character is getting ever closer to leveling. Yeah, we got kind of an unlucky falls pattern there. That that added like almost 30 seconds to the fight, maybe 40. Holy. What a waste of time when falls does that. So yeah, it's kind of like, I want to do an experiment at some point. Maybe I'll play sandbox mode to find like the exact HP total that I like. It's somewhere between... There are certain cutoffs, like I think 910... Where it's 915 might be my favorite HP total in the game. Where it can basically, it has enough to survive most attacks, but more importantly, it can take advantage of the fact that it falls down. Which is not always true. There are scenarios where you would rather stand than fall. So like, I understand that too from the flip side, but yeah. What absolute madness. I guess I should get rid of Sacred Guard. I'm assuming it isn't used for anything. It's the clown music plays. It's quite something. Oh, Sonic Schoolhouse. Oh, only two minutes left of the clown music. Slash merry-go-round music. Next up is Sonic Shuffle. Did you want to hop in, Diz, by the way? Just wanted to double check before we go further. I'm assuming I don't need Sacred Guard for anything. Let me see if they updated anything since I last played. Let's find out together. Secure poison. It could be used to make angel ring, which is for plating. Okay, I'll keep it then. Maybe somebody will want it for the plating. Edward Enigma asking, can I join? I have a 162 hue cast. You have to reinstall, says Diz. Oh, I'm sorry, you have to reinstall, but sure, Edward Enigma, you are more than welcome to join. We're always happy to have a another player hop in. Tiki says, I want to go for heart plating, but collecting the items is such a tall order. Yeah, that that's... I like that they gave it there for people that want to have more to do with the game once you've collected, like, I have my Sealed J Sword, I have my Baran's Launcher, I have my, you know, kinds of things in there. Welcome, welcome. Nice little Kirby. <laughs> I was gonna say, Imperimeter surrounded by robots. <laughs> So I'll probably pause very briefly to change the soundtrack.
We are slowly getting through all the Sonic possible spin-off game soundtracks. One by one. Uh, I should probably vice one of these things. That's better. Do a single Lapis Cannon in the next room and then move on. Pew! <laughs> nice, nice. Big sword time. Oh, I got a little bit of time to switch it out. I believe chat will knock it down. I don't think I need to do too much here. I just got to be careful not to recover too much HP while I'm swapping. There we go. Oh man, three dark flows. This is massive overkill on poor Soul Dragon. <laughs> Deleted. <laughs> Are there any items in particular you're looking for, Tiggy? I don't mind assisting in that in those attempts. Honestly, if I get them, I'll probably just give them away. I have no interest in plating. My end game for me is mostly just finding weapons I enjoy. There's only a couple I don't have that I would want. I think he's not sure what to look for at the moment. That's fair. Let me fish for this slime. One, two, three. Come to me. Come to me. Yeah. Yeah, come on. Get duplicated. Give me some rare slime. Yeah, there we go. Dupe. 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 Ooh, slightly out of range. Oh, Photon Drop. Nice. Not sure what dropped it, but I'll go find it. Ah, the Lily dropped it. So yeah, I'm basically just duping slimes. It's not a bad way to get PDs, but obviously not the meta way of clearing it. So I'm going to try to lure them in the middle of the room and hopefully we get a red slime at some point on stream. It'd be nice. So let's do... One, two, three, to make sure we dupe them. So if you don't attack three times, your fire traps won't duplicate them. But if you do attack three times, this happens. <laughs> yeah, give me those slimes. Give me that XP. Hmm. So yeah, we basically just added like another five to 6,000 XP to the run by me doing that. It's so stupid, but I love it. Seriously, I didn't get invincibility again. I feel like I'm getting trolled by my mag. I'm like, it is a Nidra. I'm just, I'm just double checking. It, it didn't feel like it. That boss got deleted. So I'm gonna hold down into the right here just so I end up where the treasure is. Yeah, there we go. Oh, just a resound. Not worth. I love you can move during that cutscene. <laughs> That's just one of my favorite things where I'm like, I realize I could heal during it. Then I'm like, wait, can I just walk to where the boss fair is every time? Like, why am I not doing that? I'll kill a couple of the gill chicks. They're low enough. Just gonna drop a couple of confused traps. I mean, honestly, while I'm waiting, I might as well just kill one of these. It's not like I'm not gonna be able to hurt the enemy by delaying. Okay, 
Okay, so we'll let them go through. We can put the immediate freeze trap down. <laughs> so much damage. Team just too powerful. Thank you for the assist. We just keep our eye out. If we get the three monitor cycle, I'll drain my HP. Otherwise, I'll take care of the turret. Oh, it looks like it's going to be a two monitor. Got to be careful here. Take a safety heal. Welcome, Burton. Hope you're doing well. Just barely didn't drain enough, I think. That's unfortunate. <laughs> there we go. Just some casual dark blowing. Yeah, I think at some point I should probably get a strong Diska, a brave man with this character in 13, to be a bit more meta. I have her on Black Hound since I've been playing more single player, but I think now that her ATP is like almost maxed, I could probably go for uh, riskier armor choices without getting hard punished. Hopefully you're doing well today, Burton. That's, oh, that's so mean. Chat, a 30 hit Durandal dropped and then a zero hit Disco Brave Man dropped. Man, can you imagine 40 hit Disco Brave Man? That would have been kind of nice. That's so disappointing. So sad, chat. It was off by one roll. <laughs> Just one item too early. So sad. Oops, I did not get the good freeze there. I gotta be careful. Primate drop. Sadly, no Psycho 1 from that Sorcerer. Rip. I... I mean, I... Uh, I could try a no-heal strategy on this boss. I guess, what's the risk that happens? I guess I could just die. Oh, there we go. Our timer is 9 hours, 59 minutes, 59 seconds. We're doing a good job, Chad. Good pace. <laughs> Rip the timer. I now have no idea how long this will take. This will be fun, though. So four player, I got to be a little more careful about positioning here. But I have a feeling I'm going to kill myself almost instantly at my HP total. Something tells me. So yeah, the number of spinners needed to defeat these increase. So I'm going to stay on the northern half of the map since I am a hunter. I don't mind poking some of them if they're not too far away. I'm not in a bad position currently. Although I think because we missed one in the other wave, we might have to kill one more on this wave to make it end. I think I saw one from the last wave. Oh, that didn't end it. Off by two. Interesting. Hi. Well, I'm still in a decent position. I'm mostly where I want to be. I can slightly reorient against the head, so I don't have to worry too much about this. Oh, I forgot to Dark Blow. But I think I... Yeah, I had too much health. Yeah, the draining items get rid of a percentage of health, so... Is both useful and not useful. Okay, so here's my little tip. 
If I see this and just walk backwards, I will not get hit usually. And if it targets me, I can pull it away from other players. So I think I was being targeted there because I made it miss another player that was further up. Because Falls likes to center the lasers on one player for the most part. Like, it picks the pattern when it goes to shoot in the air. So if you are perfectly walking in a cardinal direction up or back, more often than not, it will dodge the ability. I think I was moving at a slight angle there relative to the boss, and that's why I didn't dodge it. So like slightly diagonal left will not dodge as an example. But typically speaking, if you're playing single player, if you just walk straight at the boss or straight away from the boss, more often than not, it'll dodge. Goodbye, boss. I've had some luck with up and to the right. Like, if I'm really far away from the boss, like, it goes full arena, I could go slightly to the right, and it usually is also fine with most of the patterns. So I think with that one, I pulled it towards me, but because I was not walking in a cardinal, I got punished. Which we'll take. If, if it focuses us and we pull it away from the group, that's even better. But we beat it at 11.06. Nice job, chat. You could do this. Yeah, that's so sad though. It was like 30 hit on the Durandal. So close. <laughs> when I heard this for a moment, it reminded me of Shadow Hearts. Now it doesn't. I was like, oh no. <laughs> Not Shadow Hearts in this game. Okay. I didn't really use that many items, so I might as well just make another game. Just let me know, Chad. If you get tired of TTF. We still got some time to do other quests. The TTF is kind of nice. I'm open to at least hit 169 with this character. That was my goal for tonight, regardless of what quests we did. So, game is Ziggy, password is King. Forecast is... Rangers, Newman's females, okay. There we go. <laughs> I still got to tell myself to remember to use my new controls. Like, technically, I can do all of the shortcut commands without typing in the keyboard. So my goal is to basically not touch my keyboard while we play. So if we take a look at our chat shortcuts, I can see what the RBR is. So I might as well let that scroll without uh, doing anything special. Yeah, not quite even B. I wouldn't mind trying an RBR, a sweep up operation, just to learn it. I think Tiki was saying they were alternating that. If chat needs me to bring in a blue ID, I'm okay with bringing in a blue ID for it. Although, I'm not sure how late I'll stay up for PSO. Hopefully everybody is enjoying the... Sonic Shuffle soundtrack. I don't know why I bothered attacking something that Tiki was shooting. That was like a, that was like a pipe dream. <laughs> I would hit that before Tiki killed it. <laughs> there's just there's no no chance. No even know why I bothered. Foolish. I guess I can. Yeah, I should probably do that for the menu. I gotta teach myself to do that. That'll be faster than the menu I did before. One. Oh, it's on the other panel. Duh. I forgot. That doesn't do what I wanted to do. I should probably change that. Yeah, let me change that later. Let's not worry about that now. I should probably just make my left stick consistently Moon Atomizer so I don't confuse myself. I went to Moon Atomizer and I realized it's not on my first panel, even though I could very easily do that. 
See, this is where we just got to play a character after a while and go, what did my hand naturally want to do? What did I, <laughs> what, what did I set it to? And then we correct these things. So I don't think I need a Dimate there. Yeah, I don't think having a Soul Atomizer makes sense for me to put that there. So once we're done with this boss, I'll fix it. Because I'd rather have on-demand mood atomizers, so I'm not worrying about holding, like, two buttons to do it. So I think that's what confused me. So we'll change this to... There we go. Now it makes a little more sense. You know what? I think I will go for the grinders. I do need quite a bit of them for later. Although, sadly, this puts me pretty far behind for this next room. Oh, now the slime spawns. Oh well. Hmm. This will be fun. So I will be slightly behind that chat, but that's not too bad. So I'm gonna do is one attack, two attack, three attack. So now all my fire traps will duplicate. So now as long as I stand in the center, they should just explode. Ooh, I think chat pulled one of the slimes a bit far from me. I could do this one, though. Ah. That's as much as I could do. Oh, power material. Rewarded. So, boss will get pretty close to leveling me. I'll take the safety heal. Oh, oh, okay. I take the safety heal and this time it invincibilities me. Thanks. Thanks, Nidra. My faith in you was shaken. <laughs> I, just, I got punished that time. Did not need to use those. I could have used another charge attack there to speed it up. I'll blame myself on that one. I decided to just triple power instead of doing a special special at the end. I'm gonna go this way mostly because I just want to mess with the guild chicks. And I have a million confused traps, so it doesn't really matter. Nicely done. gonna say likely in three or four TTF or not TTFs three or four RTs I'm due up for another uh, parasitic gene flow statistically feel uh, speaking should be pretty close to getting another one almost guaranteed for one of the players not for me specifically it's the odds they are actually pretty good That time I was able to focus one down. And now I get to potentially damage myself here. Oh! I was not expecting the game to hard turn me there. That's interesting. Today we learned. I was holding forward and attacking, but it still went backwards. That was interesting. like a three monitor I might what is a three monitor oh 
Oh. oh. I, I even die. I swear I even menued the die mate. That is so sad. I must have missed it by like a few frames. It's so sad. No, no, it's not your fault. It's fun. I did not menu fast enough. I should have believed in my item shortcut instead. The frames it cost me to go in the menu and select the right one killed me. Oh well. The more you know. Nice level up. Ooh, no accuracy? Really? It's a bit of a bummer. Uh, what do I not care about? A vein material? I think I skipped off of that. I mean, double HP material. I do like it on Faux Neural. I think she's like one of the few ones I will actively use it on. Other characters are more of a mistake. <laughs> I wish I could actually reset HP material on some characters, but I consume it unintentionally. Oh, well. Any fun items down here? Not really. Get rid of you. Cruising on through. There is a escape doll back there. Is it worth picking up? I feel like the answer is no. I got two. That's more than enough. Also, I realized I didn't get shifted again. That's my fault. Could have asked for it. Oh well, at least I got free straps. That'll carry me over. Let's go this way. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, we'll probably do a couple more TTFs and then we'll probably mix it up. I I do actively want a red ring, but I don't want to get burned out on it because we're going to be doing a lot of TTF, I think, touring uh, certain downtimes of Easter. I, I guess the best question we should be asking ourselves currently. Oh, there we go. There's the Moon Atomizer shortcut coming in handy. Uh, I guess what quests do I feel like doing for Easter? I mean, typically when I think Easter, I end up doing like Terrell's Ego or Rescue from Regal. So expect to see like a lot of that quest pop up. But I'm curious if there's other people that have go-tos for Easter. Like are, are we spamming like Cal's Clock challenge, for example, to try to get the Easter Rappy? Ooh, I wonder if I can injure myself just enough to get Dark Flow. Oh, just, just a little tap. Oh, I got double tapped. I got greedy. I got greedy. <laughs> My bad. I was trying to get hit once, so that way I didn't have to be equipped with Girasol, but instead that put me in a bad position. My bad. I'll go over to and parameter. Yeah, that way I could get reshifted. Yeah, thank you. My bad. The greed. Ooh, we did like almost 3,000 on that first phase. That's kind of nice. Let's go this way. Ooh, that's an unfortunate attack. Probably gonna hit most of us because we were all on the other side when that happened. But this is where we just commit to damage and go through the boss. <laughs> I like that in four player laser attack. We we don't get to practice dodging laser attack as much because we just burst it. It's a very valid strategy. But for single player, it's good to know about moving up or down to dodge. It's also guaranteed that it's focused on you versus another player. So you are more likely to dodge. If it's focused on another player, I've noticed the pattern does not always get dodged. Welcome, Chris Grimm. Hopefully you're doing well. Ooh, 
bad pattern. Well, at least we should be able to burst the boss. I'm gonna whip out the vice for this, actually. See if I can kill the boss when I stand back up. Yeah, there we go. Deleted. Welcome, Raiders. Hopefully you're doing well. We are listening to Sonic Shuffle as we murder things in PSO. No worries. Hopefully you get some rest. Appreciate the raid. I will take that money. So yeah, we'll say one more TTF. Then we'll switch the quest. Just to say we gave it a fair chance of giving a, a nice red ring on stream. Obviously, today is a drop rate week, which does not bode super well for getting these kinds of drops. But at the same time, if you don't do the runs, you won't receive them. So for me, I'm happy I managed to get some PDs. Slightly elevated, I think, by the fact that we have drop rate up. Ooh, I think I do restock the Dimates. You're lurking and also playing PSO, PSO one tutorial. Or are you playing uh, PSO two or something else? You're doing the same thing. Nice, nice. I was gonna say, what level are you tutorial? Also an Affinia. Oh, you're 34 right now. I was going to say at some point next month, Toriel, if you would like to be quickly rushed through the game when it's XP week. <laughs> Sonic Shuffle's music is not a vibe. <laughs> then I'm uh, more than happy to help support that portion of it. We do like to help players when there are certain weeks. Just right now, it's not very conducive towards it. So I'd rather go for other runs. I haven't heard anything you even remotely like. Oof. I think music's okay. But clearly not Tiggy's, uh... <laughs> Tiggy's like this when he hears the Sonic Shuffle music. <laughs> the frowny face. Like, if I heard this, I would have assumed puzzle game. I don't actually know what Sonic Shuffle is. It also sounds like a puzzle game by title. Yeah, so we just, we did a guide on YouTube or the channel talking about control setup and stuff like that. So for example, without typing anything, I could just instantly shout or I can do a lot of the quick commands. Like I could look at the current drop percentage of the area or what today's forecast is. A lot of those quality of life changes are kind of nice. Sonic Shuffle is Mario Party, but extremely mediocre. <laughs> that is that is a description. Oops, not what I meant to do. So yeah, my goal, I think, this year is to learn to play Hunter better. So I'm just kind of grinding it out and fine-tuning what I feel works and doesn't work. Oh, I have invincibility. I don't have to care. And then, uh, yeah, we'll probably play more Ranger. So I think to mix it up, I will probably play Blue ID. So sadly, it's not quite even beat yet. So maybe we'll do a RT or two while we're Blue ID while waiting. And then maybe end the stream with that sweep up operation. This poor dragon boss is just getting massacred. 
But glad you are enjoying Iphidia. Yeah, the usually probably like once once a month we spend a couple sessions. Once a month may, may, might be a misnomer. Once a week per month we usually go through, or maybe twice a week, we do some games with people that are looking to power level. Today is not that day though. Uh, will this dupe the slime? Yeah, dupe the slime. Dupe it. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Free XP. So unfortunately, last week was that XP week. So if you had been by, and I've been playing PSO, I absolutely would have power leveled you. I think also sometimes during rare enemy, if I get really burned out, I'll do it. So if it is rare enemy week, I am also more likely than not to do um, power leveling. The reason being is I actually want items that are in episode 4 specifically. And that requires rare enemies anyway, so doing a legit run for items will result in me power leveling people. So we have characters of all sorts. Look at all the slimes. Dupe them more. <laughs> Dupe them. <laughs> I love that. There's this like a lot of tech that... It's like I'm sure a lot of people have figured out, but it's not really like... I, I haven't seen like a video kind of document all that like stupid tech that we were just doing. So I try to point it out when we stream. Because I think people sleep on Fire Trap in particular. Like people know how broken Freeze Trap is. Like I, I don't think they need videos on that. But there's just a, like a lot of like edge case scenarios where Fire Trap is like hilariously good. Ooh, that wasted a lot of money. Rip my, uh, Masetta. Rip Masetta. I'll hold back into the right to get closer to the other end of the raft while the cutscene is playing. I fluid. It's not what I want. Oh, nice photon drop. You figured out where to stand for the no hit? Yeah, I'll try to watch you next time. I know it's like against the edge, I think. I just don't know where specifically on the raft. That's another thing where it's like, I'm aware there are gaps and I've hit them unintentionally, but walking to them consistently. I should just watch how it's done. You're currently on a Hue cast. I know how broken all the traps can be, says Toriel. No problem. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying the Hue cast life. They are quite good. <laughs> Hughcast is like, people are like, but Hughcast has no accuracy. What are you gonna do? And you're like, I don't need accuracy if the target's frozen. And you just delete them. You're like, what, what, what weakness? <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, for people looking for general items, there are a lot of people in chat that would probably give you stuff for- Oh god. <laughs> oh my gosh. There we go. That was the- did you feel the panic? Chat, that Baran's missile was coming for me and I had like 100 HP? That absolutely would have killed me. Fortunately, I panicked in a tight circle to dodge that, or else that would have gone really horribly wrong for me. It's like, listen, falls, I don't care. Vault op, I don't care. Random Baran's missile, that I fear. <laughs> I was like, I was like, it's coming for me. The real final boss is Baran's missile. You can't tell me otherwise. Oh my gosh. Hardcore players had a stroke, pretty much. Such a nonsense enemy. If the ultimate murder flowers didn't exist, I would have been like, move over, Ilgil. I don't care about you. I care about Baranz. <laughs> you're, you're my real final boss. Baranz is the Ilgil of episode one. <laughs> There's my hot take. 
That thing has killed me more than any other monster in the game. Thing is like actually insane. Oh, I didn't drain my HP. I will right, we'll go for Vivian back up. I could have been draining while I was talking. Oh well. We gotta make our adjustments when we don't play optimally. I deserve to get hit by that. <laughs> why, is, why is there a random scream in the soundtrack? That's something. For a moment there, I had flashbacks to, like, Mario paint. Get out of here, Claw. Amplifier blue. Well, that's disappointing. I mean, I'll pick it up, but I don't really care about it. Also, can I just state how happy I am that the Sorcerer drops are now always inbounds? So that way I literally double my chance of getting Psycho Wand to this run. There's so often where, like, if the timing gets messed up, it just becomes unattainable. Now, I don't have to worry about that. That's no longer a thing. Kind of like when I was going for zoo farming initially, and I was in that horrible zigzag room in MA4B. Like, yes, there are a lot of zoos, but at what cost? None of the items were attainable. <laughs> I love the team's health. We're just like, team low HP. I love it. <laughs> I'm sitting at 50% and I had the most for a while. <laughs> so silly. So yeah, I think I'll put away some of these items and I'll hand it over to my Hugh New Earl. So she'll be able to buff and debuff in case people want to swap out, because I don't want to make people feel forced to play certain classes. But otherwise, uh, it should be a basic steamroll over Olga Flow. Contemplating if I should put my uh, 60 Vice into the share bank. I should probably keep it on this character so I don't have to worry about it in the future. Let's go! Oh, soundtrack. Oh, I killed it. Oh, I didn't kill it on the transition. See, that was my bad. We could have killed it one early. Rip. Slightly too slow. One bullet hit it, but it needed, I think, two bullets to die. Ooh, I am in a bad position. I don't like being at this angle for the boss, because I normally miss it. So these are the things where I gotta practice. If I end up behind the boss, which is safer against the spinners, what direction on the control stick do I specifically need to be holding to always face the boss? Yeah, like, see, I was holding right, and I didn't turn there. I think that's the downside. Uh, I might as well just keep walking forward. If I didn't make that adjustment to the left, that would have dodged. Oh, I got punished. I deserve it. Should not have made that micro adjustment. Anyway, boss dead. I literally stepped like one step to the left and that put me in alignment with the lasers. That was so sad. Here we go. So yeah, we're gonna do some basic damage here and then I'm gonna hover my vice. Since I have the last one out, I just wanna get some consistent damage and then we're gonna hover vice. Let's see what the boss does. Will I get an opportunity to use it? I will. Ooh, that damage. Ooh, that was big damage. Don't you short cycle us. Oh, you, sh you dirty short cycler. Dirty chat. Don't appreciate that. So here's an example where having high HP would have been useful. To kind of, I want to be fair with that the ghost statements before. Not getting knocked down there might have been useful. Biggie, I got bad news for you. 
<laughs> I'm sacrificing you to the gods, Tiggy. <laughs> Oops, I misaligned. <laughs> no, my XP says Tiggy. Yeah, rip Tiggy's XP. <laughs> I was gonna say, Tiggy's earning those Paragon levels. <laughs> Tiggy, you could have been level 2000 in Paragon by now. Oh, no red ring. Unfortunate. It happens, though. I'll cheer because somebody cheered. Sempre has reached level 200. Congratulations to that player. So we are a little bit before even beat. So why don't we do an RT? And then after that, we try sweep up operation, maybe? So I'm going to put away the Dark Flow. That I 100% have to put away. The rest of the items... Kind of my discretion. So I'm going to go ahead and use my shortcut to switch between the banks. Probably Dark Flow... Parameter's done for the night. Well, thank you, in Parameter. I should probably at least put a Girasol in there. Actually, Lava Cannon and Vice might be good enough. Yeah, that should be good enough. Ah. So I'll be able to buff and debuff, so we don't have to worry about bosses too badly. We should be good here. Restock the character for the future. But appreciate the support and company in Parameter. I will switch over to Blue ID because they get a lot of nice drops in Episode 2. And then, uh, yeah, we'll uh, do a couple more runs. Oh, one mash too many. So we're going to go ahead and ult back. Yeah, one thing that was kind of sad, I couldn't get in the uh, Joy to Key for it to use, like, ult emotes. I tried, it didn't work. I might try it again with a different setup. Because I would have loved and able to do, like, the angry stomp on demand with the controller. That was, like, the only thing I was looking forward to. <laughs> just wanted to, be, <laughs> wanted to be clear, Chan. I was like, man, if I could just on demand angry stomp without using the keyboard. So close. Yeah, blue ID. Oh, you do have a Girasol. Oh, I didn't need to do that then. Oh, I do need that Dark Flow though. So we have a free slot for people that want to come in and do at least one RT. For respect of tomorrow in episode two. I will make the game. Tiggy has brought in the Ranger. Tiggy is not messing around. Tiggy's like, I've had enough. that in there. I guess I could keep the Lavis Cannon forever on the other character. I don't need Twin Blaze for this run. I mean, like, I guess, I don't know if the other, it's weird because I feel like some Del Beaters do get stopped by it, but this one, I don't think I've ever seen it really get stopped by the Fireball. It seems to just kind of hit anyway. Might be to, to, just due to its spawn position. That's kind of weird. Yeah, we got the vice. I got a 35 hit Jaya with a beast. That should be pretty good on the upcoming boss. And I got enough boss weapons that I should be good. I'm not gonna bother bringing in hell because I do enough damage anyway that it doesn't matter. Our setup is last swan for normal kills. We have blue, doshi, violet, nimidao. So that way it can afford to hold an Adept, because her accuracy is terrible. Centurion ability and another Heavenly Power. Since she's already capped in luck, it doesn't make sense to get another Centurion here.
So we'll give people a moment in case they want to hop in. Otherwise, we'll get started in a moment. Poor Tiggy in the meanwhile is like, Sonic Shuffle! No! Poor Tiggy. Yeah, I got the classic Smart Link. Sami Bracer's not bad. <laughs> Tiggy has died. Rip Tiggy. I'm slowly learning that blue equals VR. All I need to know is what one of the doors is. <laughs> the process of elimination. I will figure the rest out. Just curious how much damage to do without Shifta. That's not bad. Oh, that's right. There's that stupid, uh... Stupid wall that stops me from just shooting them. Get anything interesting from the Rappius? Nope, oh, just evade material. Who knows? They could end up being a PD for another player or a power material. Speaking of PDs, see, that's that's why we do that. <laughs> Tiggy proving yet again why I do certain things. It's not just insanity. Insanity is a small part of it. There we go. So we're going to take care of the Lily on one side. Siki kills the first one. I still think this is my favorite spawn in the game. I like the visual humor of it. And boom. Not quite a rappy. Ooh. Tiggy with the paralysis. Brutal. Tiggy has had enough. I'm just gonna go around and basically one button everything. Since less swan plus shift eight equals easy kill. I wonder what the music direction for this game was. <laughs> I feel like Tiki will respond with something like being awful. <laughs> Direction was into a wall. That's a good one. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little fireball down. Slow them down if they didn't get paralyzed, but not needed apparently. Put down a Gafoe as we all move away from the Rappies. Oop, somebody went too close again, I think. <laughs> I'm gonna let the cast deal with the traps here. They're more of an annoyance than they are a problem. It's kind of funny, I feel like the episode 1 traps are just so lethal, then episode 2 they're just like, teehee. Everything in this episode is just like really overpowered, except our traps. Have some heal traps. <laughs> I kind of wish players could use heal traps. Kind of fun to do. Imagine trap shooting your instant heal. <laughs> Just 
escape doll and grinder, so I will pick those up. Hmm. Oh, you know what I forgot to bring? A disc, uh... That's unfortunate. Oh well. Let's buff the team. We're gonna deal with the worm boss. Now, will the boss teleport? It should be on the right side of the map, but sometimes it goes to the upper left. Let's find out. Will you glitch teleport? Okay, you're in front of us. You didn't glitch. Got some debuff down. I think if I was a little less in the corner, I probably could have Zalord a little more. I gotta work on my worm Zalord when I'm not a force. When I am a force, it doesn't matter. But I gotta learn for the non-standard approach, better positioning. Thank you, on-demand soul atomizer. So, like, while I'm here, I could debuff a couple more for the team. Ooh! That could have been much worse. Goodbye, boss. I'll hit you for more meter, why not? Oh boy, let's let's count how many seconds we lose on the raft. The timer is at when it dies 217. I got a D another D-roll shell. Today is my night for that apparently. So we're at 217 in the buff timer. Oh hold on. The trick is not on that line, it's like slightly to the left of the line if I remember correctly. We were talking about optimal raft positioning. I think it's where I'm standing. I wanted it to be the line there, but it's like not. It's like slightly to the right. Tiggy might be in a better position than me. I'm not sure. I think the way I kind of visualized it was like two character widths to the left. So I'm just going to hold forward. Yeah, Tiggy was in the better position. I was looking at Tiggy's position and I was like, yeah, I think it is. So it's more like three character wins to the left. That's that's when you know you're bored in a quest. <laughs> when, when you're optimizing the raft exit. You're just like, yeah. Got nothing better to do. <laughs> oh, respect of tomorrow. So Tiki very easily able to take that out with a nice little cannon rouge. So sadly, I can't debuff this upcoming boss. But hopefully I can maybe get in a dark flow. But that's purely dependent on getting Mag Invincibility, whether I go for that strat. Yeah, I'll do one even beat blue ID game for Tiki, and then we'll probably call it there. Since I do have work tomorrow, sadly. And I know RT takes like an eternity to finish. <laughs> we still have like another 10 minutes to go minimum. So silly. Ooh, do I feel like getting trolled by Del Saber? Hmm. Maybe I just pop the Rebarta here. Punish? Oh my gosh, I landed the Rebarta? What a miracle. I mean, that's what you're supposed to do to stop it from leaping, but I can't believe it actually froze. Also, chat. F, F in the chat to when uh, Rebarta was uh, accidentally buffed. And then it was found out that they did that and reverted it. Rip Rebarta. Never forget the forum post talking about favorite things in Affinia that caused it to be nerfed. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> uh, I should probably gear a soul here a little bit. Give me a second. Okay, 
apply buffs. Bray, we could get away with Dark Flow. Did not get invincibility. <sighs> Seriously? All right, well, I'm gonna wait it out just to be safe. I don't feel like getting tagged by a random breath attack and dying. I'm just gonna choose not to move. There we go. Now it is time to Dark Flow you in the face. And safety die mate, because I almost never dodged that attack. There we go. I believe in the safety die mate. That wasn't too bad. What? 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 How did Gazan miss? I'm gonna go rewatch that. Did it target something that popped? Why didn't it chain to those boxes? I know I definitely gazonded there. That was insane. I'm gonna blame episode two for that one. Take these. So sadly, unless we have hell, it's gonna take a while. But honestly, with last swan, we kill in one combo anyway. This is why I don't really care what weapon I use here. Less one OP. Unless I whiff, because... Oh, I remember. I gotta do normal, normal heavy. Because I'm not the Huka Seal. That'll kill. Oh, no, I missed. Ooh, okay. Never mind. She doesn't have enough ATP and accuracy yet. So with Red Ring, that would have killed. Because I need to be able to land that uh, heavy attack more consistently. That's unfortunate. So Huka Seal has an advantage here. Like, just slightly too weak without it. Plus, I'm not max ATP. Oh, that also matters a little bit there. Okay. We're gonna wake them up. This thing is easy to kill, though. Yeah, so now it takes four attacks because I can't land that heavy consistently at the end. There we go. up so chat can kill them. Got which end they spawned. <laughs> I had to think about that. It's like I was it up and I was up. I'm gonna reset back to more of a neutral position for them. Oh well. Today we learned, and then we'll forget tomorrow. <laughs> oh no, chat's buffs wore off. However, will they hell everything to death? I'll still apply it. Do it in spirit. Oh yeah, speaking of which, I need to drain my HP again. I gotta get my little drive-by on uh, Dark Flow. I might as well do that while I'm waiting for spawns. There we go. Yeah, so it's so four normals is pretty consistent. It's just unfortunate I can't kill them with the heavy attack consistently. If it crits, it does, but I think I just need a red ring or something. Anyway, we're gonna hold still at the beginning and just dark blow them as they drive by. I could try to lure them as they go by, 
I'm not sure which is better from a speed perspective. I know when there's like two rangers, I think it's technically better for me to Zalora than Dark Flow. <coughs> So we'll try it and see what happens. I'm gonna believe in Tiggy's damage here. Oh! The Zalor didn't reach? Why was that? Maybe slightly too early or something? That was unfortunate. Oh, I got stuck on the arena edge. That was unfortunate. I should have escaped Aldo. My bad. That means I could probably get away with a vice. Oh no, I should go for Charge Falcon here. I might get hit by the electric attack. So I'll play it slightly safer here. Yeah, there we go. Goodbye. <laughs> like the little shadow spinning. Chat of a <laughs> I would like you to know we have a literally unbroken streak for Gal, Gal Griffin Wing. One day, chat. It will spawn on screen in the middle there. I promise you. <laughs> just just not for me. <laughs> so sad, chat. Rip the item. Oh well. The squid. So we're in a happy little journey through Seabed. Debuff them a little bit, rebuff the team, make sure they're topped off. Get knocked down by random fire attack, that's fine. Rebuff the team. Build the robot. Safety heal. Check out my back on that one. I was just unlocking it. So I will go up the platform so that way I'm in a position to hit the switch so we don't get poisoned. I'll pop the boxes just because. Yeah, fortunately, at least for Olga Flow. When they're up in the sky, I'm still able to Zalore them before I'm able to damage them anyway. So I won't lose any real time on DPS. We go for the risky charge volks on Olga Flow. It does more damage and is more likely to hit. I just have to decide upon it. Build a recon just because. Hmm. This is the room where I'm curious. Is there somewhere you're supposed to stand so it never hits you? Because if you put like a fireball out, it still usually hits you. I think it's just maybe just due to its spawn position. Because I do feel like it does work on other quests, just... I don't know if it's just like one of those things where it like... Just happens to be where like the beginning of the door is, so you'll always get hit. Unless you're like more to the side or something. I would love to see the spawn box of that particular one. But anyway, continue forward for now. Still got a minute left of buffs or so. Another escape doll. I think I go pick that up. Great 
Supply some bugs. Oh, I thought he was much closer and realized he was still over there. I was rebarting him thinking he had teleported and was looking for me. Just half right. He just didn't teleport. Yeah, this is where hell definitely saves some time. Just because the Rico boxes are pretty easy to hit in general. So, in theory, I could bring stuff here. I don't really recall if the Morphos are worth killing in this room or not, to be honest. I'm gonna see some raw damage to them. At least if I still lure them, they die pretty quickly. Just not as quickly as with hell. for the team. No sense in going in too early. Okay, I'm going to be the decoy for the stupid robots. Ooh, fire trap. Yeah, there we go. Freeze. Freeze actually worked. Thank you, Rivarda. What? Wait, hold on. Is there there's a dead spot in this room? What? I didn't know that. Whoa, today I learned you could stand in the room and actually be unable to target things. Huh. That's unfortunate. I know that happens near doors. I've never seen it near a wall like that, though. I wonder if it's because it's like close enough to the fake entrance that that happens. That, that blew my mind. I just want you to know, chat. I've never seen myself miss in that room before due to uh, just being too close to a wall. Like, again, when you're near doors, that's like the counter cheese meth method that they try to employ. I'm at 100, by the way. If somebody has it, I don't mind mag blasting. Otherwise, enjoy the spikes for a little bit. Because I think we only really need at least one person with it. It's okay to donate if you're not that close. Yeah, I'll go for the twins, but I want to do it in the other room because this hallway sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I just go in the corner because I have no faith in this at all. So I will type for the first time using twins because I want to get rid of the delay. There we go. So as long as I lore by just spamming it, I don't even need to time it, I don't think, on this boss. It should be a pretty fast fight. I think I'll try to do Vice. I'm going to adjust based off the damage we do, whether or not I go forward with it. I'll heal the team a little bit. I'm just going to hold forward. I'm not going to be mashing Zalore while regenning TP, which is always nice. Listening to the song, A Nice Vacation, as we fight Olga Flow. What a very thematic and fitting song to listen to as we kill a boss. What a nice vacation, chat. Wouldn't you like to turn into a horrible abomination? Hey, look at that debuff. That's insane. Oh yeah, that was pretty quick. So I think I could have shot a little sooner to do more damage, but I did go for the riskier strat. So I think I'm going to do that again here over last swan since we have enough damage. So I'm going to choose to go left and then I always aim right for this little pillar in the background and I always walk into it as long as I'm lined up with it. So I don't have to worry about timing. So I'm going to walk up Zalore. We're going to wait for the boss to look around. Once the boss looks around, it's over. Looking around, time to kill. <laughs> the boss is like, hmm, I see people fighting here. Maybe I should. Falls over. <laughs> poor, poor Olga Flow, deleted.
I like that that boss is literally the like this phase of the boss is the least threatening boss in the entirety of episode two. It it literally doesn't even get to attack. It's just over. <laughs> like that's with three players we deleted it. Like imagine a four man team in the same fight. Just gross. <laughs> Our damage is so high. I doubt this character will level anytime soon, but it would be nice. Ah, uh, none of us got it. GG. Oh well, it was worth one attempt. So we'll do potentially sweep up operation if the chat wants. Oh, you know what I could do actually? I could bring in a force for sweep up operation. If chat just wants to be absolutely brutal and disgusting in episode 4. Because that'll be stronger buffs, debuffs. I'm assuming though somebody's PP lasering, otherwise ATP is nice. Okay, I'm gonna remember I talked to her first. I think he could host. I could also host as Newman. So it's fun. Wow, double S rank. You did it. <laughs> Meanwhile, we go to episode one. 11 minutes, no deaths. Failures. You only get A rank. <laughs> no worries. Thank you for playing Nigma slash Edward Nigma. Well, thank you also for the follow. Yeah, we'll be doing more PSO next week, probably Wednesdays, Fridays, Saturday nights, while the event is active to get more uh, PSO in. But again, if I feel burned out, we'll uh, switch things up. You're wide open. Thank you for following Hellgoons. Or Hell's Goon, excuse me. I don't need these. So yeah, that way it's kind of like a little bit of a mix. I thought about if I wanted to do any PSO in the morning, but I don't know. I, I guess if there's a lot of interest in it and people tell me to do it, I'll do morning streams. But usually nobody's on in the morning. There's people on in like noonish, like EST. But like nine o'clock, no one's up for the nine o'clock PSO. Like, maybe a person. <laughs> it would basically be uh, a parameter and Chris. <laughs> that would be it. So I will make the game as blue ID. I'm happy I got a little playtime with this character. She just needs some raw levels. So when it's XP week, I'll probably be playing her a bit. So let me switch to C-Bank. Four. Is there anybody that would like to hop in there? Do I still have that spare Vivian? I believe I do, but I just swapped out of the character that has it. Yeah, either my Hugh Castile has it, my Fomoral has it, or my Hugh Neural has it. They're the only characters I use it on, so I believe it's there. After this, I'll, I'll check it a little bit. Actually, let me just check right now, just to just to confirm. I didn't like sell it or something weird. Uh, Affinia Bank. I don't remember what the link was. It's been a while since I did a character viewer. You character data. Okay, that's what I want. <laughs> I was like trying to remember what it was called because I haven't used it in a while. <laughs> wait, wait, I almost feel like showing this to chat. It says, select all squares, all squares with motorcycles. The image is just a motorcycle. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait. <laughs> um, how does that work? Do I, do I literally just select all of them? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. There's one tile where the wheel of the motorcycle is not. Oh, I apparently didn't pass it. Wow, that was... I, I got absolutely trolled there. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, but wait, it's just a large motorcycle and you blurred out one of the quarters. Did you not want me to select the quarter there? Uh, 
Uh, one second. Sorry about the delay. I was trying to think what my password was. No, it doesn't like it. Uh, I don't remember the password for this then, if that doesn't work either. Hmm. I'm definitely using the right username, because I remembered it was using my old name before I changed to the stream name. It's not the longer version of the password, is it? No, it's too long. I have one more thing and then I'll move on. Hmm. Okay. Well, I can't figure it out. We'll figure it out later. It's one of those ones where it's like a very old password. I should probably update it at some point. Strip this character of most of their items except for magical piece. That sounds about right. Oh, they don't have the other shortcuts set up properly. Hmm. That's fine. I can't use some of my chat shortcuts. I'll have to fix that later. Let's do this manually for now. Mostly just need an adept, and I'm good to go. Double adept, that also works. <laughs> they just naturally have Gafoe merge. It's like I knew I didn't want to care with this character. So yeah, maybe I'll reset my password one time to something that I can use a bit more often, move it off of the old password. I mean, it's good to update every now and then, but... Okay, so it's extermination... The first one. That is quite a XP rare drop combo with just two players. I love force sometimes. <laughs> Just literally got a giant now. Nice. Hmm. I'd still be able to do the other character shortcuts for this if I need to. I think my buttons are a little weird if I'm looking at this correctly. Oh no, actually my buttons are completely fine. Never mind. I forgot that this I forgot this character was using the reverse before I made that my official one. Hmm. Cuz I was experimenting whether I wanted the bottom buttons like the 5 6 7 8 to be like clockwise or counterclockwise. I apparently set this character up to be counterclockwise, which is fine. Saves me some time. Because I, I kind of like having fire... Ice lightning, I guess, a little bit. So the only thing different is my ice button is in the right side instead of the middle. Although I guess it matches the elements now that I think about it. I'll, I'll just leave it as is. We'll learn to use the buttons. So I should still be able to use the bank, it's just the downside is I forget which direction is what I need it to be. If bank was one or lobby was one. I 
I kind of remember doing this quest a long time ago. These these waves and this and these rooms look very familiar to me. Diz has a spare Vivian that also works. Thank you, Diz. Yeah, I'll, I'll look at my character reader later. I I definitely do not have a good one. That I could confirm. So I have a lot of all zeroed ones because I think I picked them up from. I believe something in episode four. I think I got it from like one of the um, black paper deals. So I had some from there. And then I got hilariously terrible episode two drops from Lily. Like they, it was so sad. I think I got like three zeroed ones in a row from the Lilies and then I gave up on Vivian hunting for like a year. <laughs> I was just so tired of their bad stats. No worry, Diz. We'll we'll probably do that right at the end. Then you could give it over to uh, Tiki. We'll very much appreciate it. Yeah, like this is feeling very familiar. The double Babuda and Astark. I've definitely done this quest on stream before. Google Bonker has found art of Daisy Chain. Congratulations. I believe they also stream PSO. You want to get a hit disco brain man? You still? Oh, you actually still don't have a hit disco brain man, Diz? Or you just mean like a high hit disco brain man? Huh? I mean, I, I I'll check my inventory. I was giving the I was giving them out because I don't normally keep them if they got fifteen. Okay, I'll keep that in mind if I pick up any more to give them to you. So I have at least like a 15 and 20 hit one somewhere, but without the character reader, I can't quickly do it. But maybe I can reset the the password if you don't mind waiting a little bit so I can actually read the reader. Yeah, because uh, help me helped me get a few of them and I found a few on my own because I was doing box runs. You got need to get back to farming units like B101 and Adept. Yeah, V101. I guess I'll wait more. It's okay, I guess, to do during drop week. Because it impacts the zoos a little bit. So we'll probably do a little bit of that at some point. Again, I just want to make sure people that want to get those kinds of items do well with it. And uh, TTF is always the easy one to get V101. So that's just kind of like whenever we do TTF, we could do green instead of red. I was hoping to get uh, potentially uh, rare enemies with Lava's Cannon or get the off chance drop on like a uh, Sinnoh Red or something. I vaguely recall where to go. There's a switch that's not activated yet. So we'll go back over here. Ouch. Yeah, so I think at this point, I'm like... Almost every single one of my V101s has come from TTF. I have I definitely have gotten more V101s than Red Rings. And not every TTF run was V101 possible either. I think he should hit the switch there, and then I think we should be good for later. Hello, random dwarf on. I didn't remember the double dwarf on here. Hmm. It's fine though. Perish. <laughs> yeah, like it might be on my uh, general character bank. I think it's also possible my other character bank has the Vivian. So what I'll do for Diz is possibly without needing the password reset, I'm just going to check my other character bank since I did move a lot of the spares in there. So it's very likely I put some in there for uh, new players.
I'm assuming, Diz, you have like a 13 already for the Disco Brave Man. Because that makes a big difference in damage. I might have a singular dis or a 13. I, I believe I never got rid of the one that I picked up from many years ago. Because I, I have not been 13 farming in quite some time. That would have been me bringing in white ID as a force. Which I do have them and I do sometimes play them, but it has definitely been many months at this point. Because I was doing, uh, what was it, limiter runs last year. I just happened to pick it up, I think, from a box drop, because that's one of the possible drops. Yeah, I think I've done this quest before, because I think it drops... Doesn't it drop you something like the Dirty Life Fest or something weird? Or is that... I'm assuming it's this quest line that drops it. Yes, I think the only downside is if I reset the password there, I forget if it updates the PSO password. I've only ever done a password reset once before. So, offhand, I don't remember if they're both related or if it's just for the forums. Oh, I'm so dead. I didn't realize he did 400 on the leap. That was in my bad. Damn, that's the damage was way higher than I thought it would be on the leap. He's out here doing more damage to the dragon. Yeah, we'll do some checks. We'll help uh, Diz out if we can. Maybe I'll find Tiki's Vivian. And I'll have a happy little game together. Just exchange some items. Yeah, I do like Vivian for um, Omaral when I'm playing certain episodes, because potentially with a little bit of hit on things like Rego boxes, it's actually possible to restore my TP in episode two, so I don't really need to bring fluids. With just like a little bit of hit percentage. Because the Rico box has like terrible, terrible evasion. But if it does have high hit, hit percentage, it does help a little bit with uh, dealing with Del Beaters. In case, uh, you know, it gets paralyzed. A little bit of hit accuracy is good enough for Fomarl. She doesn't need it super high if it's paralyzed. That did insane damage to me. Hello. This is where it's like a dwarf on on both sides, right? Different quest, different quest. Oh well, let's heal Tiki. Oh, Astar on both sides, whatever. Goodbye, Astar. Knocked down there kind of sucks. I'm gonna gel in them. By zoo. I feel like we're near the end because I want to say it's like it doesn't end in like underground, it ends at like surface.
the bystander wrapping is. So yeah, I guess while this is up, technically, if we had a group going, we could do limiter hunts. I wouldn't mind getting more limiters. I don't have enough for me to consider doing, like, another duo game stream until we get another one. So I could unlock an Excalibur right now, but I don't have, like, any units to go with it. So unless I'm unlocking somebody else's, this seems like a waste to do. What am I farming currently? Uh, Blue ID as Stark is limiter. It's also just trying out the sweep up Operation 10 since it's in the RBR. So while it's even beat, it's potentially pretty quick with multiple people. Yeah, I, I guess if I beat Dungeon Drafters really fast on Friday, maybe I'll do PSO then. But my goal is to just beat Dungeon Drafters on Friday, however long it takes. Unless there's like another really big dungeon, I see myself beating it. Piggy loving Summer Mirage from the soundtrack, from his favorite soundtrack of all time. There, nice. I mean, I might as well pop these boxes because I see them. Wow, absolutely nothing. So sad, chat. <laughs> boxes equal not worth. Yeah, so I think in terms of, like, experience, this quest is still not worth doing, but possibly with RBR, due to the number of Astarks, it's probably fine. Because I think this was one of the go-tos. I think it was between this and War of Limits 1, if I recall correctly, for Astarks. I might be confusing that between War of Limit 1 and this one, actually. But I, I have probably done both on stream. If I were to dig back. Because most of the time I stick to the uh, massive attacks because they're just so overpowered. Nice photon draw. Yeah, that no hit Jaya makes me sad. I do actually need better Jaya's because I'm using almost bare minimum hit on Hugh Casile. It's only 20%. Some of the other characters have like a 45 hit Jaya, for example. I think I have 155 hit Jaya. I think that's on the Q cast. So it's like I actually have decent endgame spheres due to playing this character long enough, which is kind of nice. So for all the people saying, like, why are you farming on very hard mode? I'm like, that's where I've gotten all my good Jaya so far. <laughs> I have not gotten a single useful Jaya on any other difficulty than very hard. I got a semi-useful one on hard mode, though, which I thought was funny. Sometimes you just gotta play the lottery and believe. Yeah, I don't think since I've played PSO, I have ever gotten an add up from an Astar. I guess that could be a personal goal, just to say I got an item from the anime. I've only gotten them from, uh... Ooh, excuse me, I've only gotten them from, uh, Gerdibulu. Let me heal up real quick. Get run over, don't mind me. Find door pong. <laughs> I love I can just target him and he doesn't even see me. That's so sad. Yeah, I think War of Limits one puts me in the other room, so that's what I was thinking. I think they reuse the same path getting there. It's like slightly different towards the end. Because both of them have that setup where it's like double Babuda into a single Astark. 
right before you go through one of the teleports. I think that one might have the double door on. Anyway, GG. I'm gonna switch characters, check my bank real quick. And end the quest. Uh, I should probably put back my add-ups. The dream is over. We are done with Sonic Shuffle. Listen to a little bit of Sonic Tennis if we just look for items. There are a lot of Sonic games, Chad. We talk about it. Like, a lot. I didn't realize how many there were. They, like, I, I recall there were some spinoffs. And I'm like, I know there are a lot of Game Boy ones. And then I'm like, listening to these and I'm like, oh my gosh. I think it's more than one a year. It's kind of crazy how many games there are over the many decades of Sonic's existence. So let's go to C Bank 99, my favorite number to type in to go to C Bank 8. We're gonna check real quick. I have the ability to look at my uh, share bank without making a game. So I just wanna see who has my Disco Brave Man and possibly my Vivian. I'm assuming it's my first S Bank character, might have both. We'll find out together. Components and techie definitely do not have it. S Bank 2 could have it because I don't think I moved all the weapons over to them. So it's kind of a coin flip which character it's on. There's this 20 hit Jaya. I mean, if you just want a 15 hit Disco Brave Man, Diz, it's basically yours. There's Gear of Souls. I should probably pull, pull Gear of Souls out for myself, actually, now that I'm in here. I don't remember where Vivian is in this list. So many random items. Alright, I'm gonna make a game, if nothing else, to... Give a Disco to Diz. I'm gonna call the game Ziggy. I will double check. I did not see a Vivian in here, but that doesn't mean I don't have one. And if nothing else, Diz can hand over the Vivian to uh, Tiki. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. 40% A beast. I just, I just don't recall where Vivian normally sorts itself when you put it in here. That's why I want to go through it manually. I think I actually do want one of these Gear Souls on one of the other characters. Yeah, there's Yun Chang's, Tyrell's Parasols. I'm gonna check my other character as well. I'm just gonna drop the other item for Diz. There's the Vivian on the floor. Enjoy the Disco Brave Man. I'm gonna look to see if I have a slightly better one, but at least it's better than nothing. Let me switch characters. If nothing else, that AB's damage. This poor random cave monsters are gonna get deleted. We're gonna check our other character real quick, see if we got anything there. Again, my Vivian would be all zeros if I did have one. So if Diz gave you one that's all zeros, that's the best I could offer anyway. I think I have one with like 20 native and it's on my Hugh Casile, if I remember correctly. Which is very sad, but that's all she's got. Oh, hold on. Hold on, Diz. I could do better. Give me that 15 back. We're upgrading you, Diz. I'll give you a 25 instead. Unless you need more than one, then you can keep one. Okay, just double checking items in here. Did I have another one in here? See, I have random weapons. I gotta move them onto the other character. A random heaven strikers. 
to enjoy 25 hit dues, which is a little better. A four slot frame. I do not have one you could permanently use. <laughs> the answer is yes, but I, I only give it out unless I'm power leveling. Yeah, I have like expensive frames. I mean, technically, Tiki, if you just bought a regular frame, I could probably give you the ad slots. Oh, did you, did, did you need the 13, by the way? I was looking for the 13. Yeah, like, I literally just buy a frame and use ad slots on it. I, I kid you not, I, I don't mess around when I'm leveling characters. You got one? Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Do you have anything else in here? That's a heavenly use. That should be good then. I'm gonna try my character viewer one more time. I hope this is not the password. If it is, I definitely need to change it. Okay. Unless... I'll try one more, I'll try one more thing. In case it finally registered my account change. No, okay. Oh, I'm not sure what the password is. We'll figure it out later. Oh no, it's telling me verify mountains or hills, and almost all of them are mountains or hills. I'm apparently an AI, I can't answer these questions correctly. Wait, is that a fire hydrant or just a water pipe? I feel like this is a- I feel like this is a trick. <laughs> like, wait. <laughs> why is it- why doesn't it look like a normal one? Why are there like five spout things sticking out of it? What is this? What weird hybrid things have I gotta do? No worries. Just, I'm getting confused by the other thing. It didn't feel like a normal one to do. Hmm. Okay. So I'll fix the password, I think, for another time. Did you need anything else, Diz, in terms of items? I was just curious. I can't help you with the B101 or out of though. There were some basic items you were missing. Okay. Oh, there's Caduceus. That's what I was trying to think of earlier. Fix that typo later. Yeah, I got some spare Heaven Strikers for new players. Ultimate frames, like a million stink frames, which are actually sometimes really good for defense. A couple of blue Adoshis for new players. I got an okay mix of things to potentially give away for next year. Yeah, the anti-light ring I might bring with me going forward. Someday you'll farm a Heaven Striker with a good hood. Yeah, we just gotta do more cookie quests in the future. Oh, it's it's by far like pretty much the best pistol. It's mostly because of the Berserk. The sniper range helps, but like the Berserk is like what ends up killing everything. So the high ATP will end up killing things like zoos, Dwarfons, like just basically everything. To the point where you could just match it for episode 4 and that's one of the only weapons that you need. It's kind of crazy. If it's properly uh, presented out, of course. Okay, well, I don't have anything else to add. I'll figure out the password woes for another time. Let's shout a little bit. So how do we feel today's session went? Well, we played with new players. We played more with uh, Huka Seal. So that was a character I did not use for quite a while. That, that painful journey to get past level 140, so she actually started having more than 1100 ATP, was uh, quite something. But now that I'm past that hump and she's at least at 1200 ATP, you know, at least Last Swan is clearing pretty quickly. Dark Flow's doing some real damage. Sadly, her ATP caps at 1301 instead of like 1400, which is what it probably should have been, to be honest with you. But it's fine. 
I'm just glad to be able to use characters in more scenarios. I had a lot of fun with her last year with the kunai. So we'll probably see a bit more of her in like random runs. The fact that now I have her luck up and her defense is good and her attack is about the same as it was like eight levels ago means that I have pretty solid clear potential now, start to finish. So other than that, we're going to be going for probably mostly just endgame rares when we play. I think during rare enemy week, I might level other players as well. Because as I said before, I am not a fan of rare enemy hunts. I could humor chat with like, I don't know, like a episode 4 rush for like Heaven Striker, like purple ID. But for the most part, I just don't, I just don't enjoy the rare enemy hunts. I think there's something about just like going literally hours without seeing the rare enemy that annoys me more than just killing normal enemies that happen to also drop things that I want. Because it feels like I'm not even given a chance. That's my mental perception when I go into rare enemy week, where it's like, oh, I saw literally zero Hildators in like 500 killed. And then I play like TTF on like XP week and I find two Hildators and I'm like, well, that sucks. <laughs> like that's kind of unfair, but I guess it is what it is when it comes to that. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll mix things up. So for people that are looking to level, this week is not your week. In fact, let me check. Is next week Rare Enemy Week? Let's find out together. I don't know, because I don't pay attention to the cycles. I just know it was XP Week last time. It is Rare Monster Week next week. So there is a very strong possibility next week I will be helping people level rather than dealing with it. I do want to see Delrappies in Episode 4, because that'll give us Ignition Cloak. It's like you get Hilda Blue so quickly and also getting a nice hit on Frozen Shooter. Yeah, I haven't really gotten a super high hit on Frozen Shooter, but... It's one of those things I'm not in a rush. Like, I have like a 20 hit Frozen Shooter and it's okay. I'd prefer one day to maybe get one that's like 40 or 45 hit for Snow Queen, just so I can see what it's like. I think that's like maybe the only other item in the game I would maybe hunt for. But that's a pretty easy hunt and it's also low on difficulty. So unless I play it on Anguish, I feel like I would get bored very quickly. So shout out to Affinia for adding it, uh, Anguish in so I can enjoy it rather than feel like it is an absolute auto win. But yeah, uh, that'll be the plan. So for people looking to level, I would say check back next week. We're gonna be doing a mix of leveling people and rare enemies. And of course, we'll still throw in stuff every now and then. But I think that's all for now from our video. So hopefully you had a good time. Hopefully people got some good XP out of the runs, except for Tiggy. Tiggy's too overleveled. But with that, thank you all for watching. And uh, I guess if you came from the video or the VOD, hopefully see you again in the next next time slash the next part.